Super Sports Network. Let's go! And good morning to you. Beautiful sunny day right here on Woodward Avenue in downtown Birmingham. My name is Stick. This is the morning Woodward show live on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all digital sports network. Thank you guys for waking up with us, being a part of the conversation, dropping your comments in there. Uh, Everybody listening on our app, which is free for download right now. Thank you very much. Lots to talk about in today's show. Um, You know, there's a press conference going on at University of Michigan today with some former athletes uh, dealing with the Bo Schembechler situation. So we'll address that coming up. Uh, We also got a Coney review because it's Wednesday. DDR is going to be here. But first, last night, we talked about it yesterday that Kevin Durant had to put the team on his back. He had to perform at the highest level. Corey said he had to score 45. I was like, more about 50. I think we both were both right. right. (laughs) Uh, It was a free throw shot. (laughs) At at the end, (laughs) too. He missed that free throw, by the way. It's KD. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to go and be right. He's going to get 50. And then, no, all of a sudden, no. But if you were watching last night's game, I mean, Corey, you said you got some heat to start off the show today, so... First of all, let me introduce everybody, and then we're going to throw it to Corey for that heat. To my right. What's going on? It's Corey. To my left. Joey. And over in uh, producer land, we have Alex. And in the sound booth, we have Fish. And, of course, Jeff is here manning all of our social media, and he's going to be a part of the conversation coming up a little later on today. And shout-out to everybody that's already in the, the chat right now. <laughs> make sure we get a lot of those comments up on the screen today, so make sure you bring the heat mm-hmm. in the comments. But... Let's start it off with Corey. Well, well, what you, know you got, what? man? You sipping tea? This, this tea's a little hot, so let me just sip it real quick. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. That's good. So, first off thing I want to say is, before I even get into the game, look, I'm, if you're familiar with Harry Potter, you know who he who not be named is. So, <laughs> he who not be named does not need to be named today when we're talking about Kevin Durant. Yes, that guy who's not going to be named has had many great playoff games but all over social media i'm seeing his haters say well he could never play like this or he's never done this and then i see his you know his fans are saying he's had many games like that he's had many games like that he's done it before look for effing once can we talk about the one guy who did his job last night and give kevin durant his props last night was Everything that you can ask for from a superstar. And I'm going to paraphrase a tweet that I put up last night. I said, when we talk about wanting to see a superstar put a team on their back, go out swinging, and willing their team to victory, Kevin Durant's performance last night will be a game that people will look at as the definition of it. Because it was truly a masterpiece. 49 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists, and he played all 48 minutes, not a single minute or second on the bench. And that's coming off of a year removed from a gruesome injury. What do you want? What more can you say about that? It was, I'm, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, KD got 18, you know, the first half. All right, you know, cool. 31 in the second, 20 in the fourth, and each, and they eliminated a 17 point lead. I'm like, wow. He, and he gave it to you all kind of ways inside, outside, mid range, three point. What, what more do you want? What, 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 what more could you, could you ask for? I that, mean, that extra free throw at the end that makes me right on that 55. Right. <laughs> but, but before I kick it over to you guys, Corey just hit every single note that I had written right. down say, but, but, in but, one segment. But it's just my goat. It's just like, <laughs> but as great as a performance it was by KD, which was a masterpiece, I would have fired Mike Budenholzer right after that game because that was an all time choke job. 
I mean, the Bucks got to look in the yeah. mirror and understand <laughs> what they the situation that they gave away last night. Yeah. Now you got to win two against the Nets, and it's going to be tough to do. But uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with your sentiment last night. Listen, the first half of that game looked awful for the yeah. Nets. Like it, they did not look like they knew what they were doing. They were out of sync. And then you know what? Kevin Durant had that superhero moment where he put on his cape and just started draining shots, back to back three pointers, assisting, getting steals, getting key rebounds. He did everything that you could ask any basketball player to do. And to me, I mentioned this before the show to you guys, it was even more impressive because he was out there with three other guys. Like James Harden was occupying space. He had a couple Come moments on. where he was defending okay, but he was not out there in his full capacity. He was occupying space. He, he I thought several times I screamed at the TV, take Harden out because he was doing nothing. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You cannot. Now you weren't watching the game. I Harden watched the game. Doing a damn I watched thing. the game. How many points Harden, Harden It doesn't had. matter about the points. It how, matters about how many having assists, how many James steals, Harden out there blocks, as a like, threat. It doesn't matter. Hard, it's about he was a decoy. He, he exactly. Was, exactly. Okay. If exactly. James Harden decoy, was not out he couldn't there, play. It don't matter. If James Harden was not on that court, I guarantee you it was a different outcome. Guarantee you yeah, it was a different outcome. Yeah, they probably would have won by more. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Have, Honestly. Having he, James Harden out there is still a, 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 a big decoy out there for the defense to have to cover. No. He was Guaranteed. A, he, so, you're gonna, so you would rather sit James Harden out next game, game six? I would. Yeah, I totally would. Now that you have one in the pocket okay. and you're up three, you're up three. Well, yeah. here, here's the thing. You have to look at James Harden in this aspect. His IQ as far as running, you know, the offense, you know, taking, you know, just being a decoy. Yeah, he did that. But at the same time, he was one for ten. He didn't have it going. He was a defensive liability. Yes, he and, was getting smoked and, and, by and, Connington. And, and this is also <laughs> and this is also why I blame the Bucks again. James Harden is out there on one effing leg, and they didn't go at him. Right. They, they bled him off easy. You're Giannis Antetokounmpo. You're freaking seven feet tall, and you're backing KD down to do a turnaround jumper? That's that's idiocy. Right. Well, that's what I – honestly, I was just going to bring that up because even during that play, Harden was waving off the help defense on Giannis. If I'm Giannis, <laughs> I'm feeling disrespected. Yeah. Like, what the hell? You can't even guard Coddington coming around a pick, but you're going to try to take me one-on-one, -on -one, and he settles with a fadeaway jump shot? Like, that just shows – that and Giannis not guarding KD showed to me that that dude shied away from the big moment. Like, this could have been his game because he had a stretch where he took over the game seven straight points in the second quarter. Yeah. And I thought, oh, man, this is really going to put it away for the Bucks. But then Giannis just disappeared in the second half. And it's great that you had that good moment in the first half. But KD had that fourth quarter. And, and the fourth quarter trumped it. And, and what's, crazy is the th the, um, what's crazy is that <laughs> – I got thrown off. <laughs> what's crazy is that the Bucks started off the third quarter playing a little bit better. They were getting into their offense. They had the rhythm going. The defense, the defense just still was pretty bad. But they had the offense going. But then afterward, like somewhere I want to say, somewhere around the eight, seven minute mark, they started playing a little bit more hero ball. Yep. They weren't they weren't swinging it around enough. And I'm sorry when you got a guy when you as long as Kevin Durant is on the other side of of, of that team. No, a, a 15 point lead is really like a six, seven point lead with him. Yeah, no, that's the way I feel with them. If they can, like, I felt this way about the Pistons back in the day, too. As long as they're within 10, they're within striking distance. So yeah. at home, at yeah. home, if you can keep it within 10 at home, you always have a chance to win. And man, just last night, I'm a Kevin Durant fan. You guys know this. Like, he's, he's one of my favorite players of all time. So for him to put on that performance, it's really nice because I didn't want to come in here today and be like, oh, Kevin Durant yep. couldn't get it done. Dap, dap, dap. He, he had the weight on his shoulders and he couldn't do it. Um, here's Durant in his post game just talking about how the game went. Kevin Durant, nice to see you again, Kevin. You said that the other day you were ready to adapt to any situation. How much of that included preparing for playing every minute of tonight's game? Uh, I mean... I wasn't planning on playing every minute, but as the game started to flow, we got down. I told Coach that, uh, you know, if you need to take me out for a couple, it's cool, but I feel good, and he just let me ride it out. So, you know, Jeff Green was <laughs> incredible tonight. James coming out here and, th and, and, and thugging it out for us, um, creating, being another ball handler for us. I mean, I just think the second half, we played extremely hard. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about next. 
So uh, we you got to give credit to Jeff Green too. Game, we we game. haven't mentioned him yet, but my God, that guy was a game changer last night. Game of his life. Seven for eight on three pointers, and that that's that's the exact role. Like there was a uh, post game I was watching of him, and he knew. Like he said, my assignment for tonight was to be the open man and shoot the ball, and he did exactly that. Seven of eight three pointers, and, and you look at Kevin Durant. The most impressive part about that was he did all of this on twenty three shots. It just showed that the God. dude was lights out. Oh. 23 shots. You look at any of the great scorers, it ain't on 23 shots when they're dropping 50 points. Easy money sniper. Yeah, he had the second highest point scored in a triple-double in playoff history. You guys want to know who had the first highest? LeBron James. Russell Wilson. Or Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> if you're watching, Adam. Just wanted to throw that Missed out the there. Missed the triple-double. <laughs> I mean, the, my favorite moment of the game was actually was at the end. It was Steve Nash hugging KD. That, that was, was classic. He, that really was been, he really should have been hugging Mike Budenholzer. But, I mean, yes, that's neither here nor there. I I just looked at the game in disgust because I was, I was in awe of KD's performance, but in disgust at how the Bucks played because they honestly, I don't even want to see them get to the next round. Just off of how they played last night. I want to go ahead and see the, if the Nets go to the next round and they just happen to lose to the Sixers or the Hawks, okay, so be it, fine. I don't want to see the, I don't want to see the Bucks win this series because they straight up laid down the second half. It was, it was, like, it was like Avengers. What did Thanos say? You should have aimed for the head. They didn't aim for the head. <laughs> they, they did not. They took the kill shot. Um, and here's one of the funny things I saw last night is the Bucks in the postgame. Listen to what they had to say. I mean, he's Kevin Durant. I promise we tried. <laughs> we <didn't... laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I saw that and I died laughing. That's, honestly, like, Kevin Durant <laughs> is the only person that you could pay that respect towards. I, I promise you, we tried. <laughs> like, please don't take it out. We tried. And, they, and even then, I didn't want to hear Giannis say it last night. I really did not want to hear him say that last night after how he played. I mean, it's crazy that he had 34, that he played that great but still played that badly. But he said that. Um, here's here's the video. Play, he play that, this video of what Giannis had to say. Uh oh, you got it. Oh, you got it, Joey? Yeah, man. Like, I get where you're coming from, Corey. We got the same opinion on this one. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Just keep making it tough. Uh, obviously. One of the best scorers to ever play the game. Um, it's it's kind of it's tough. It's tough, you know. Like he he's the best. He's the best player in the world right now. And uh, we gotta we gotta beat him as a team. We gotta guard him as a team. We gotta make him um, make tough shots like tonight. Uh, and we just gotta keep doing our job. And hopefully, like he hopefully he's gonna miss. He he did he looked distraught, and that's the <laughs> thing about Giannis is is I just don't see it in him. I'm gonna give it to him. He's a great basketball player. I just don't see it in him. He's not the guy that's out there like a Kevin Durant type player that has that ability to just put up points whenever the heck he wants points. I'm gonna come back from 17 like Kevin Durant does. He didn't have a move in his bag that he could go to. It, it, he got. Exp it's, it sounds so. It almost sounds stupid to say that this guy scored 34 points, with, with and it was as efficient as he was, but still got exposed for not having any moves. When the Bucks needed a basket from him, he couldn't do anything but keep on bringing it back out to the top of the key and kept trying to go ahead and charge and get to the basket. He did not have anything in his repertoire. And somebody said it on Twitter. I wish I would have screenshot who it was, but he needs to pay a visit to um. Hakeem Olajuwon this offseason, regardless of how this plays out. He needs to get some low post moves. He needs to be able to get some type of mid-range shot that he can fall back on because he, that, he, that, that should not have happened last night. No, because he has all those tricks in the bag. When he went on that 7-0 run by himself, he hit the mid-range. He hit a three, and he drove the lane. Consistency, like, though. Yeah, yeah, so... Great game last night. Congratulations to Kevin Durant. If anybody ever doubted your skill set or anybody said that uh, you weren't the best player in the league, I, I can argue now and I can use this game to point to like, hey, when That's all it. the chips were down, when all of his best players were gone, when it wasn't a super team and he was playing with pickup guys, he led them with a damn near 50 
point triple double. So we got two game fives coming up tonight. The Hawks and the Sixers and the Clippers and the Jazz. Hopefully uh, those games match what we got to see last night. And I'm so glad that game lived up to the hype. Because the first half I was so disappointed. Like, man, I was looking forward to watching good yeah, basketball I tonight. Know. And it wasn't good basketball until the second half. So congratulations to the Net to Nets. Take a 3-2 lead in that series. Hope to close it out yeah. in Milwaukee tomorrow night. But we got Clippers, Jazz, and Hawks, Sixers tonight. Looking forward to that game. Also looking forward to the weekend. So I can grab myself a bottle of Eight Mile Vodka. Man, you already looking forward to the weekend, <laughs> well, huh? My, I already. Am, <laughs> I'm picking up my mom for the airport on Thursday. I haven't oh. seen my mom in two years because of COVID, and wow. you know, well, after, you haven't seen her in two years. No, and after losing my dad three years ago, like not seeing your parents sucks. You oh know? man, so I'm mom, happy she's coming back. Yeah, mom's coming in town. Uh, normally, I go down there for Thanksgiving, but I couldn't make it obviously the last year or so. Uh, so yeah, mom's coming in town. We're going up to the cabin this weekend, and um, mom likes. Uh, little cocktail so i'm gonna pick up a bottle of eight mile at the meyer by my house right there in southfield 12 mile and telegraph and there you go born in detroit support local eight mile vodka i'm looking to bring out another hvac tech right now we are recruiting five to ten techs a month we're looking to grow and expand every new tech we hire is from northwestern tech the hands-on training is fantastic they're always my first call we love hiring northwestern tech grads they come out trained and ready to work our program is only ten and a half months and our next classes are starting soon so why wait i'm looking to hire i'm looking to hire, hire a graduate of northwestern tech northwestern tech northwestern tech northwestern tech, northwestern tech. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show live on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. Thank you guys for watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. We see your comments, and they always make us laugh, and we're, we appreciate you being a part of the family and just being a part of the chat. So thank you guys very much for that. Um, we don't spend too much time on Matt Stafford on this show because he's no longer a lion. You know, we talk about him here and there, but... When his name gets brought up by a lion, I think we should address it. And that's what happened when TMZ caught up with Michael Brockers in the airport. Uh, they started talking to him about getting sacks this season. And, you know, I, I liked his quote. Oh, definitely. Come on now. Just coming to take care of business. You know what I do. All I want to do is win. That's my only goal. And it says, um, with Goff in Detroit now, Stafford is on the Rams as their quarterback. Brockers is looking forward to facing them in October where he wants to sack Stafford at least once. And here was his quote on that. I got to get at least one. I mean, I'm trying to sack every quarterback, but I got to get that one. I love that out of Brockers, especially after the fake kind of drama that he had, mm -hmm. you know, bashing Jared Goff before he came here. Yeah. Um, so it's good to see that this dude is all on board and here's him making some plays, blowing up that tight end, trying to block him and just stuffing the hole. I'm excited to see Brockers on our defense. Corey, you, you saw him at mini uh, training camp, right? Or I didn't OTAs? Get, I, I, he, I know he was out there, but I didn't really get to see him like okay. zone in on him that much. But I want to get in on this quote. I mean, for honestly, what else is Brocker supposed to say a part of Dan Campbell's team? Dan Campbell's a team full of ass kickers. So he's he's a Dan Campbell type guy. He's what he's looking for. And I loved it. Um, yesterday, I was able to watch that inside the den um, clip they had from when they were going through the draft. And it just kind of seemed like that's the vibe they built in there. And I've seen that vibe at the training camp. But just more so about Brocker's. It's personal. Let's be real. He wants to sack Matthew Stafford because it's personal. Why? Because last year, he had a chance to sign with the Baltimore Ravens for three years and $30 million. It didn't happen. He ended up going back to the Rams for three years, $24 million. Got a, got, got, they got a discount. And then what happens? They trade the guy, which is why I'm also for, you know, players, hey, you don't owe these teams anything. Your NBA, NBA, NFL, NHL, all these things are jobs. So just go ahead, get your check, and do what you got to go do. So I think he wants to knock Stafford's block off to just give a straight up f you to the Rams organization. Yeah, uh, like you said, what else is he supposed to say? But <laughs> what I like about this is, even though we're not rivals with the Rams, I feel like there's just this small rivalry brewing now. Now that we swapped quarterbacks and we got a couple of their players, we got their GM over here, um, you're starting to hear McVay throw little shots here and there at Goff. You're starting to hear Brockers throw little shots. Like, it's we haven't had a rival really for the Detroit Lions outside of in our division. 
And here's the thing about it. There, I believe that, okay, first off, you got Jared Goff. Hold on, I'm saying this wrong. You got Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford on the Rams. But there are way more Rams people, former Rams people on the Lions that want to go ahead and rub the Rams' noses in it come October. So I think that's why I'm, that's an, another reason why I'm always, but I'm believing that the Lions are going to go ahead and win that game. There's going to be a lot of extra motivation in that game. Granted, granted, um, Brad, Brad Holmes and Ray Agnew can't get out on the field, but you know they want to win that game. You know Aubrey Pleasant wants to win that game. You know Michael Brockers and Jared Goff, they want to win that game. I think it's going to be so much intensity that this rob that is going to end up being one of those once a year type robbery games or every other year, as long as Stafford is a Ram. Yeah, it's just nice to see. Like yeah. nobody's really poked us in the past, you know. Like we really haven't had this. Oh, we hate them for the Lions. Like I honestly, like you know, Red Wings growing up, you hated the Avalanche, yeah. right? Tigers growing up, you know, you hate the White Sox. You, you hated the Padres back in the day. Um, definitely hated the Giants after what they did to us in the World Series. So, like, I feel like every team has always had their rivalry, you know, Pistons and the Bulls or yep. Pistons and the Heat or the Cavs when, you know, they were rolling. The Lions have never really had that outside rivalry to light a fire under them, I guess, is what I'm looking for. And I think this is going to be it. Just judging by everything that we've seen from the back and forth between both teams, it's it's getting fun. It's, I, I really wish football was starting next week, but – this is going to be really good for the Lions. It's going to be really good for the Rams. And it's going to be really good for football. I honestly think that if both teams are remotely successful by the time that game comes, I think that's going to end up getting flexed to a primetime game. That'd be great. And, I mean, you look at, obviously, quarterbacks as your leader to the team. And when you switch them, there's obviously going to be that hate towards that former quarterback of yours. And it's not hate. It's just you want to beat them. You don't want to see your former quarterback do better than your new quarterback that you have. So to have this, and I'm riding with Dan Campbell all the way on something like this, I'll get behind a Dan Campbell on a fight any day of the week. <laughs> and I'm seeing people say, oh, yeah, we hate the Bears. And, yeah, you're right, but that's in the division. Like, those are – you're those supposed are, to hate those your are division. Those are built-in rivalries, right? I'm talking outside the division rivalries that the Lions have never really had like cuz we've never really posed a threat to anybody. But I love this. I love the little back and forth, you know, McVay when they introduced uh Stafford sitting on stage like, "Yeah, I'm excited. I got a leader now in the locker room. I got somebody I can trust. I already feel like I'm a better coach because of this man." And it's like, that's nice. You're supposed to say that about your new quarterback. It's the shiny new, you know, toy you got. But at the same time, you're kind of backhand slapping the old guy too. So hopefully this keeps brewing up until that game time and we get to see a mauling of the Rams. It's gonna be some it's gonna be some hard work. I mean, I'm not really that much of a fan of the Rams line. I I think that the Lions could really make it real tough for Stafford in that game, but let's be real, Stafford is going over he does have a good team, does have a good coach. Could could be a could be a very interesting game, but the Lions, I do believe that if there's any game of the season they're going to come out motivated besides game one, it's going to be that one. Yeah. Don't know what's going to happen this series. I mean, this season. Don't know what's going to happen, but that game, you can best believe that everybody on both teams have that game circled. Yeah, so the Lions actually have, like, three big games this year. We got, you know, obviously the home opener, which is always a big game. Yeah. Then we got the Rams game, and then we got Thanksgiving. So those are three, like, benchmarks to the season that we can look forward to this year. I'm excited. What are we now? Um, 88 days away from the Lions playing. 88 days from kickoff, but... It's cool. It's so random that TMZ caught up with Brockers. I'm assuming it's because he was in LA, LA. Yeah. and like he played in LA, so they are familiar with him. And you know, because normally Lions players are not getting stopped by TMZ. Like nobody, nah. <laughs> nobody cared what Matt Prater had to say two years ago. Dude, imagine what that LA airport is for TMZ. <laughs> oh, just, just. dude, they probably got a full timer just staying at the airport. Oh yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, how they get paid, man. They're not even full time. Those those guys are all independent contractors. They only get paid if they produce content. That's, that's amazing. Why, that's why they just camp outside. I mean, they're paparazzi. That's that's literally what they are. What's up, Fish? Not that it matters, but it's TMZ Sports. Oh, okay. Who covered the story. <laughs> so. Thank you, Fish. Appreciate th that. Th hey, Fish, thank you so much for that, honestly. <laughs> we needed that. Well, I think they're two different. I mean, they're the same company, but they're, they're like Fox Sports Detroit <laughs> National Fox. Right. They're two different 
channels. Or, no, I, or hey man, shows. when I'm wrong, I'm wrong, Fish. You nailed me. You well, got I, me. I just wanted to tell you that's probably why they called up to Michael Brackers because it's TMZ Sports and not just actual TMZ. Right. If it was TMZ, I don't think they'd give a shit. <laughs> but it's TMZ Sports. They're trying to get sports people. They got him, and they got to go to interview out of him. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a great quote. Like you know, he 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 said the right things too. Like yeah. I want to get a sack every game, but then he emphasized, but I really want that guy, and I love that. So especially you know, your team traded you away. And you were a captain at one point. It doesn't feel good. I mean, I his whole career that. was over there. Yeah. All I gotta say is. You put it out there, now you got to go on up to it. It's just that simple. That's true, too. So 88 days away from kickoff for the Lions. Hopefully this rivalry keeps heating up over the course of the next uh, couple months, and then we can have our mini Super Bowl. Like, that'll be our Super Bowl this year. If, we, if the Lions beat the Rams this year, that'll be one of the biggest wins of my lifetime. I mean, it's the one that we want. I don't know. Meaningful. I don't, one I, of the I most know. meaningful wins. For, on a personal level or for the actual organization? Both. I, I mean, both. I, 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 think, I think, like, for this season, it will be, it will be meaningful for me because it's like, okay, yeah, we, wouldn't, we, we got ahead and we, we, got, we stuck it to Stafford. But, I mean, like, as far as overall for the organization – Oh, no, I gotta think about that one. I, I think you guys are underselling this, man. If like you got to think about Brad Holmes, you got to think about Brockers, you got to think about Goff, you got to think about Stafford over there now and who they have. Like this, that it will be a defining moment. Like it's not gonna, it's not I, gonna I, play I, out for I, ten I, I years. Think, I think it would, I think it would mean more if Stafford was a winner here. He left. And then he left us like high and dry, and then went over to the Rams, and they, and they were like successful up to that point. But just me, but meaningful is like, eh, you, we we you didn't do jack here, and we just well, now we just want to rub your face and like we just want to whoop your ass. It's I mean, when you say meaningful, are you referring to the feeling as a Lions fan of of knowing that Stafford didn't bring us wins and to see him go there, and then if he beats us, it's like damn. Like, what what do you mean by like meaningful? Meaningful. I mean, like, I, I don't know how else to describe meaningful, uh, but it's... If we're a bad team, we're a bad team. Just because we get this W, it's not going to mean anything. It will. Uh, it definitely will. If they beat the Rams after all the incestual trading that we've done, like, the, it will mean something not only for this organization, but for the players that we... And the and the GM that we brought over from the Rams. Like, it, it is... It means something from the top to the bottom for these guys. I think it's meaningful for them in the aspect of... Okay, we beat our our former organization, but that's I think that's pretty much where it will lie. As far as in as far as in the history of Lions, Lions meaningful wins, I don't think it's gonna go, go up what, anywhere. Point back to a more meaningful one. I mean, <laughs> nothing. We exactly. haven't been winning. Exactly. That's yeah, what I'm saying. If you're a bad team, uh, there's no such thing as a meaningful win. That's yeah. That's kind of where I'm getting at. It's just like it's. it's you a can't good, say, "Oh, we're eight and nine football team," but. We beat the Rams. That's all that matters. Like, that doesn't matter. I didn't say that's all that matters. It, I said it, it would be meaningful. It, it's, it's, like, it, 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 it's, like, it's meaningful in the aspect of just like, you know, is we, we, got, we beat our own teams. But just as far as like, this is a great moment for the Lions, it's... It will be. Well, they got, uh, we'll it'd see, be cool to we'll say see. that we beat Stafford. I mean, when we looked at the schedule and we found out that the Lions are playing the Rams this year, that was awesome feeling because I just want to see us play Stafford. So we win that game. It's gonna be an amazing feeling. We lose. I'm gonna be pissed because that that's our former so it quarterback. Has meaning to you? No, not, <laughs> no, no, no significant. You're you're saying we're underselling it. I'm gonna just say if we win that game, that's cool. But if we're a bad football team and we win that game, I could care less. Yeah. Well, to me, it's a meaningful game for the entire organization and for just what what has transpired through this entire offseason. If you if the Lions don't have that game circled on their calendar, then I don't know what we're doing here. I mean, they better have week one circle before that, though. Of course. What did I just say? Three games. Week one. Yeah. Thanksgiving and the Rams. I said that. Those are all. The, those are the You're three biggest. You're putting too games much emphasis season. on this game. I I don't think I am. I'm telling you, if you if you went into the Lions locker room right now, I guarantee they have that game circled. Oh, yeah, guarantee. They, yeah, because it's meaningful. <laughs> Why else would you circle it? it it's, it's, it's okay. Here's the thing. 
it's a meaningful game in the vacuum of this season. Right. I don't think it's an, outside of this season. I don't think it. Yeah, he said in me. ten years it's not going to matter, but for this year it's a very meaningful matchup. So, so there we go. We'll find out who wins that game coming up during the season. I'm I'm so jacked. Eighty eight days away, man. Eighty eight days away. Also jacked for the grand opening of levels. It's going on in center line, and I cannot wait to we can tell you the exact date of this. Um, it, they're, they're putting together a great grand opening. I'm talking food trucks are going to be there. Huge giveaways, some local Detroit artists, and some other surprises. We're going to be out there broadcasting live, so make sure uh, that you follow them right now at Enjoy Levels on Instagram, or just hit up their website, enjoylevels.com, and just check out all the stuff they got to offer. Good morning, everyone. Extra, extra, read all about it. Let's get into Joey's news. Let's go. So last night was labeled as the biggest game of Kevin Durant's career. And the dude came out to play. The dude ended up balling out almost 50 points. Ended up with 49 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists. Playing all 48 minutes. Didn't sit down once. And my favorite of the whole night is it only took 23 shots for him to do that. Shows that he is one of the greatest offensive players in the game. And Giannis said post-game this. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Just keep making it tough. Uh, obviously, one of the best scorers to ever play the game. Uh, it's it's kind of it's tough. It's tough, you know, like... He he's the best. He's the best player in the world right now, and uh, we gotta we gotta beat him as a team. We gotta guard him as a team. We gotta make him um, make tough shots like tonight. Oh man! Oh no! <laughs> Giannis just does not have that fire in him. That's the only thing. And honestly, and that's been the knock on Euro players in general, isn't it? Like they're just, he's just too nice. Yeah, like he's too nice. Like you look at Giannis and he dropped what thirty four points and twelve rebounds. You look at the stat sheet, that's good, but his thirty four compared to Kevin Durant's on a comeback down from seventeen, it's just you can't compare the two. Yeah, Giannis peaked early in the game. Durant peaked late, and that was the difference. Like yeah. Giannis had and a great second quarter. Yeah. It's all about how you finish the game. That's why you hold up the four come fourth quarter because if, if you you can't lose that fourth quarter, baby, you cannot. What does the four represent, Stick? Fourth quarter, fishy. Oh, no. No, Suns sun. and four. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I was looking for. Suns, Suns and four. <laughs> Anytime you do this. Yeah, that, he's it's totally all. changed that. Suns and four. Uh, you see Giannis driving hard on the lane right here. I'm going to show this because it was on Blake Griffin. So Griffin taking a swipe with the ball. I thought Lopez passed up that three right there. And here's Giannis going right at Griffin. Sorry, Blake. Blake he got pushed shoulder the to the face. And when he attacks, he's not afraid to use his body. He had an efficient game last night. Got to give did. it to him. But he that's did. where Giannis was taken. Like, that was the point of the game where Giannis was taken over. Driving to the hoop, hitting a three, you know, hitting a mid-range jumper, getting rebounds, getting out. Like, for a while there, it looked scary for the Nets. Like, they were going to get blown out and lose by 30. Yeah, then that second half, man, they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Yep. Jeff Green, the man who stepped up the most, seven of eight from three pointers. Here's one of them. Durant out to Green for three. And Durant with the assist too. And was and was interesting about. I mean, it was interesting with all the Jeff Green's pulls. They looked good. He it's always next man up, and he was ready. Got to give it to him. And that's it. You know, like his role and assignment for that game was to be the shooter. And you see KD driving on that and then looking for the open man. And there you go. Beautiful, beautiful play right there. The Jokic brother during. Did you see this? No. His brother. So when Jokic got thrown out of the game and he had that little altercation with Booker. Yep. This is someone recording his brother's reaction. <laughs> a 
what cracks me up is we always talk about how the security guards look like greeters at uh, Walmart, and that's exactly what those two people look like. They were going to stop that madman if he dude. really wanted to get on that court just by going, please, sir. His brother looks like a freak, too. <laughs> oh, dude, beast. Neck tattoos and everything. Like, he's a monster of a man. Man, I'm just look like some dog. Look like the Serbian dudes that you know just be outside your crib, but bats just ready to whoop your ass. <laughs> yeah, he looked like the the dude from um, what is that Grand Theft Auto when they're wearing the <laughs> tracksuit. Like that's what he looked like. Hey, fish, can we talk a little bit of Tokyo Summer Olympics? You 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 guys are talking Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hold it to five seconds and nothing more. Damn Jason it. Tatum is going to be. Playing oh. for the USA basketball squad, Fish. Okay, big deal. <laughs> That's all you get why out of me. A, why, don't you, why don't you care, Fish? Well, because you already know who's going to win. It's going to be the USA. That's right, baby. I, lo I love watching I want, USA I want, Olympic I want, I want The rest of the world better understand who's going to win. Well, I want competition. I don't want to see the USA well, win Tell the rest of the world to step their game up. We're supposed to dumb down our shit because the world sucks? Well, yeah, I mean. No! I mean, that's just what it was for the Golden State Warriors. They kept winning every year. Cavs beat them in 16, but other than that, the Warriors winning every year. The Heat, same thing. The Heat were winning every year. It's the Olympics, man. This is when we got to establish dominance you over know, the entire planet. You know, what happened when the Heat lost their players, when the Warriors lost their players. That is basically dumbing it down. Well, well listen, that was this is the... injury and trade. This is, but I did say I did listen last night, and did you hear what Charles Barkley said about the Olympics? That the U.S. No. should not send our best players anymore. Why is that? Um, just because they have long seasons, and he said, and the world already knows we're the best basketball country, so we don't need to send our best anymore. Yeah, but like that is sweet. Yeah, if you're one of the best players in the NBA, like I look at that as the biggest honor to be able to play for your well, country the best and players represent. Aren't going out there anyway. True, but I mean. Great players, at least. Good, yeah. I Our mean, good players are the best nation uh, worldwide. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not with Charles on that one. I mean, if, if we got to win gold medals, you got to send the best of the best out there, and you got to have the best coach out there. I don't want to – I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't want to watch Olympic basketball if we don't have our best players out there. It's just that simple. So, yeah, Chuck, you know, I disagree with you on that one. Yeah. If we go back to where they were just sending college kids over there, maybe that's that's fun to watch. Mm, but nah. not anymore, man. Like, the countries have caught up to us on that level. That's why we sent the Dream Team in 96 to be like, listen, guys. Like, y'all want to act like you can play some basketball. Well, here's Michael Jordan, here's John Stockton, here's Carl Malone, here's Chris Mullen, and so on. Charles Barkley, David Robinson, like that team, absolute nightmare. And, you know, then we've had some teams with superstars that only got the bronze. You know, yeah, so the LeBron-led last, team. Last well, time no, we did no, not. We got we, we to, not more LeBron-led. Larry Brown would did a horrible coaching job in that in that Olympics. That, that, that was all on him. Though. You got LeBron, Carmelo, Carmelo and D. Yep. Wade, and you're not giving them the burn they deserve. I'm glad they got his ass up out of there. We move on. Andre Drummond and the Lakers were eliminated from the playoffs about two weeks ago. And look at this. Someone commenting on Drummond's Instagram saying, re-sign on that minimum. <laughs> and Drummond replies saying, you drunk. Drummond's probably going to sign on that minimum. Ooh, <laughs> we got some breaking news. Uh -oh, what do you got? Breaking news. Phoenix Suns All-NBA guard Chris Paul has entered COVID-19 health and safety protocols and is sidelined for an indefinite period of time. Huh? Oh, he'll be fine. I'm not worried about that. I mean, thankfully, they swept yeah, him, so swept they got him. this yeah. break. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They got a week before yeah. they got to play again, so hopefully he'll clear it. But that, oh, man, he won't be able to practice then, right? <laughs> I'm guessing so. So he, I don't know how long he'll be quarantined for, but that just I came mean, out. They probably He probably had the home gym in his house. Right. That, that's still not practicing but he can't with the team. Though. Yeah. Well, it's not practicing with the team, but he can still like test his jump shot, test his three pointer. Yeah. But maybe you're not building has, that chemistry. Maybe he has brothers or kids that he can just dunk on or post against or whatever. Yeah, but no. drawing up plays and stuff like that, and like you know, strategy for the next round and Scouting how they're going to the defend team. all that stuff. It you know, it'll it'll hurt him yep. if if this is prolonged. But hopefully, this is like the golfer that you know tested last week negative or tested positive last week. This week he's negative and he's free to play again. So yeah. That that is crazy though. That is crazy. And another breaking news: Do not touch Pedro Martinez's balls. By the way, guess what? It's my game, and I dictate how I want my balls to be rubbed up. And if you didn't do a good job of rubbing the balls the way I wanted them, and I didn't feel like I was comfortable, I was gonna do whatever. 
Come on, man. How, why, why, how are you going to use those words? I mean, Paige did it. <laughs> sticky balls. <laughs> sticky balls. And they have sticky balls. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a touchy subject when you're talking about <laughs> sticky balls. I mean, speaking of sticky balls, though, the Tigers yesterday, the umpire made Casey Mize switch his glove because they said that the colors matched his sleeves. Mid-game, how could you even do that to him? It's a weird rule in baseball. Like, you're not allowed to match your glove to your uniform, and there's also rules that your, your glove can't be so different than your uniform colors, too. So it's got to be a neutral tone so it doesn't distract the batter. Like, even the leather straps that hang off can't be a certain length because it creates – you can't wear white on this pitching arm because it hides the baseball. Like, there's so many little intricate rules like that, but – the dude's been pitching with the glove all season long, so I don't know why yesterday it became an issue. Mm -hmm. And it, Casey Mize took exception to it because of the sticky ball topic that's going on right now, and this is what he had to say in his post game. First glove, I didn't get that. Yeah, he, he said the color, the, the gray color was too light. Because um, I assume everyone thinks that I was using sticky stuff now, so um, which I was not. Um, so I, I just thought the timing of it was pretty, you know, honestly. So um, either the umpires need to get on the same page uh, because I've made 12 starts, you know, and everybody was fine with it. Or John Tampain just needs to have some feel and just let me pitch, you know, with the glove that the other team did not complain about, you know, he brought it up himself. So uh, John's a good umpire and a very nice guy, but I mean, just have some feel of the situation because I hate that I'm in a position now where I assume everyone thinks I was using sticky when in reality, that was not the situation at all. Yeah, and really that is weird that it was on the umpire's discretion. Usually if you're the umpire and you notice something like that, you wait for the other team to complain, then you enforce the rule. Like you don't go out there and purposely do that and publicly do it like he did, and that's what Casey Mize had an issue with. What's up, Fish? Who won the game, Adam? <laughs> the Tigers. The Tigers did win the game last night. Casey Tune Mize out. pitched well with or without the glove, and um, there was a shot hit back to him like a line drive. Alex, you have that video? Watch this, because this is with the new glove. Ooh. Yeah, and that was with Funkhauser's glove. Ooh. So the glove still worked, even though it wasn't his, but damn, man. They tried to mess him up. There is nothing like that scalding line drive hit back to you when you're on that pitcher's mound. That's got to be the scariest thing in the world. It, it's like time is a whole different element, you know, because that, that literally takes split seconds. But in your head, you you are thinking. You you process thoughts before it gets to you. It's crazy. Hey, I want to go back to that. Um, I want to go back to that. Sham Shereni updated his um his status on the, the uh, CP3 and the COVID. Right now, according to his sources, they're saying that CP3 status – Based on the timeline to start the Western Conference Finals, it's up in the air. Oh, wow. It is. It said it's right now it's uncertain. God, could you imagine being the Suns and that's what takes you down? <sighs> oh. That would be the worst. Oh. Especially CP3. Like, come on, give it to somebody else. <laughs> right. As long as it's not CP3 or Booker. Anybody else on the team, feel free. But damn, I would be so devastated if the Pistons were making it to the Conference Finals and, you know. Our star point guard had to go out with COVID. You're going to put an asterisk on this season. Oof. And lastly, you see the shirt Corey's wearing right there. We got to shout out the Detroit Pistons Fit Summer Series is happening. And Corey and I participated yesterday in the pedal with the Pistons. And we got to ride around with Hooper. And, of course, you leave us with Hooper. We're asking him <laughs> about his thoughts on Blake Griffin. Hey, it's pedal with the Pistons, and I'm riding around with Hooper. Hey, every single day I always rip on Blake Griffin, especially now. What do we got to say to Blake Griffin? <laughs> See, nothing. Hey, Corey. That's what Hooper had to say to, to, to Blake Griffin was nothing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Detroit versus everybody. Detroit versus everybody for sure. What up, my dude? Yeah. So we're out here pedaling with the Pistons. You can come on out every single day this summer and pedal with the Pistons. There's so much fun things that the Pistons Summer Series got going on. It's the Pistons Fit Summer Series because we're getting fit. Right, Hooper? We're actually not because the man's pedaling us, but it's all good. We got a shout-out, Motor City Pedicab. Check them out, pistons.com slash summer series and hang out with Hooper this summer, right? Hooper needs more friends. Hooper's been lonely during the pandemic. Come here, Hooper. I'll give you a hug, man. I know, I know it's been tough. 
all Man, Hooper had to say. <laughs> yesterday, you guys were talking about how you're going to ride bikes in the city and do all that stuff. Y'all just getting taxied around? Nah, that was hard work. Yeah. Yeah, that, man. I mean, you you don't know how hard it was to stretch and maneuver and, and lean over the back of the pedicab. Oh, yeah. My legs to, are to feeling get, it. Yeah, me, you know, woo. Man, I love how it's called the Pistons Fit Summer Series. Right, your and fat asses are sitting in the <laughs> back. <laughs> Yeah, that was oh, good. But man. no, we got some we got some dope photos and some um content that we're gonna share with you guys and the pistons are gonna share and you'll see how the whole series went. They had people on these one wheels, I think is that the word they're called? Oh, I yeah. Don't, yeah, I don't, like I don't, the little balance board thing. Yeah, one wheel, yeah. Yeah, yeah those, those were sick. I wish I had one. I just anytime you can see Hooper ripping on Blake Griffin without <laughs> saying anything, it makes me really happy. No, who no Joey and Hooper the entire time were hilarious with Joey just talking and Hooper's non-verbals of course they, I said they need to be um they need to be their own you know sketch comedy it, it, it's really awkward talking to a mascot that can't talk back to you <laughs> <laughs> hey I gotta give a shout out to Bridge Street Exchange real quick because I want you to go there and support them and Father's Day is this weekend and make sure you take advantage of this 15 percent off discount code that i'm going to give you wsn use that if you want to shop online at bridgestreetexchange.com or if you go there and shop in person at the downtown fencing location or the newest inside a somerset collection right there in the mall go there and get all the carhartt gear they got so much beautiful things that you could get honestly if you're thinking of what to get for your dad and you don't know just go in there and kevin's going to help you out bridge street exchange Tony is a third-generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust-resistant and made for all-weather use. And the double roll-lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show live on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. And don't forget, coming up in about 13 minutes at 9 a.m., we have your chance to qualify for our Kick for Crypto contest going on. $25,000 in crypto could be yours. All you got to do is qualify at 9 a.m. We're going to give out the phone number. You call in. And you qualify. It's that simple. Then you got a chance to kick a football into the back of our truck for 25k in crypto, and you get to pick the crypto that you wanted in too, which is actually which one fun are you too. going for? I don't know, man. Imagine, uh, imagine being the dumbass that wins twenty five thousand dollars and puts it into some Bitcoin, and you lose it all in a week. Oh my God! You ain't that gonna would lose be the it all in a week. Of the Come day on, for the next five years. What? What are you talking about? You like, win twenty five k. You put it into a cryptocurrency, and it absolutely tanks. That's why you picked, like, a Bitcoin or a Dogecoin. Well, yeah, or, obviously, but yeah. there's that one dumbass who thinks he's smarter than everybody and puts <laughs> it into some penny stock and then it absolutely goes to zero. Yeah, so it's really up to you, but, uh, you know, we'd suggest sticking with the big ones. But, you know, honestly, if you want to roll out on Safe Moon or you want to do something like that, it's, it's, on you. it's your money. You want it. You put it in whatever crypto you want to. It's our 25K Kick for Crypto contest going on. You can qualify three times a day during our live streams at 9 a.m., noon, and 4 p.m. So we'll be doing that coming up in about 10 minutes. Right now, Adam is on the desk to go over his bets. Mm -hmm. How you feeling, man? Better, go Tigers. Better. Yesterday was 3-2. and two. <laughs> Fish, you're going to talk shit about the Tigers. Just so you know, I bet the under yesterday and it hit. I know. All right, we bet the wow. under at eight and a half. So don't don't sit I, there. No, I know what you Listen, bet. Listen, I, I I know how to put aside my Tigers bias. I know when to do it. When Casey Mize is on the mound, you don't bet the Tigers to win because you'll jinx him. All right, so you take the under. He pitched well. I told I told everybody he would only give up two runs through six. It's exactly what he did. Yeah, like, you let's, were right let's on just, your bet. Just, I applaud you for let's just being right. For, but past the, the Tigers, Tigers are twenty-eight and thirty-nine. But he didn't bet for the Tigers to lose. I know, but okay. they still won. He yeah, normally, they did. He normally takes them to lose. Fish, you just give me too much shit, honestly. <laughs> God, that, that, well, they you know won what? Two in a row. Kevin they won Durant, two in a row. they're going to win three in a row. Kevin Durant absolutely cost me on my uh, then gonna under bet with the Bucks and the Nets. He's still going on. Uh, it was a Tigers. push, but <laughs> when I bet it at the time, it was at two seventeen and a half, and then Harden was in the lineup. Yeah, that line changed. So that line changed up by five points, and it pushed at five points, obviously, but. You know, whatever. We'll take the L on that one. Shit happens. This is why morning bets are kind of difficult, but you know, we're doing pretty good with it. Yeah, I, I, 
They are and they aren't at the same time because mm-hmm. yesterday you could have gotten the Nets minus or plus three and a half, yep. and then by the time Harden was playing, it was depends one. how you place your bets. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was one. So there, I mean, there's good and bad mm-hmm. in doing it. Yeah, if if you play it right, most of the time you should be okay. But last night, I got bitten ass, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, only one game of basketball tonight, so we'll start there. Honestly, I'm excited for it. Actually, two games. I'm sorry. Having said that, two games. I'm going to take both on the under. We'll start with the Sixers, Atlanta Hawks. 2-2 series. It's going to be a, a very tight game five. Uh, I expect the same for the Jazz and Clippers game. Both teams are going to come out. I, I don't want to say stiff, but there's a lot on the line. You win this game, your odds of winning the series go up tremendously. Uh, I expect both games to finish under. The first game, the Sixers and the Hawks under 223.5. And, and the Jazz Clippers under 222 points. Both essentially for even money, so that's never a bad bet. Probably my favorite bet of the night is going to be on the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, straight up on the money Jean line. Belizean. Well, forget forget bias and all of that. You get them at plus two fifteen in a playoff in a playoff series. Like this is a conference final. This makes absolutely no sense to me. It's way it's way too generous of a line not to take it. Yes, Vegas have been playing absolutely amazing, but I don't give a shit. I'm here to make money, and if that hits, we're gonna make a lot of money, and that's what we're here to do. The next game, the New York Yankees to cover. Jared Cole's on the mound. When you get an ace on the mound. One of my favorite bets in baseball is just taking the team to win by more than one and a half runs. That is like free money. You know you're going to get, a, hopefully, a very low-scoring game. All you need is a few runs, and you should be just fine with your ace on the mound. I really like this bet. Granted, it's against Toronto, who have probably the MVP front runner right now and Vlad Guerrero Jr. It's, it's a good bet. I really like it, and I'll do the same for the Dodgers. Kershaw's on the mound. Philly is one of those teams that are very sporadic. They can go on a hot streak, and then they can go super cold. Having said that, I get two aces on the mound. I get them both for a very reasonable price. I love both of those numbers. And again, this is the third day in a row where I'm making a less bet, and I'm having an opportunity on my parlay to make way, way, way more than the yeah, original. Yeah, that is a crazy bet. $100 yep. gets you 5300 Yep, the, the odds on this one are plus 5391 Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's a really good ticket. Uh, it's almost worth a really good ticket. Yeah, if you put $10, you're getting 530 back. And again, I, I always say bet individually. That's how I make my money, obviously. You guys have seen, been with me since the beginning. We've hit two parlays. Obviously, that has been a significant payout. It's been great. But you don't live off of that. You live on the day-to-day winning. So last night, 3-2. and two, But one of, our, one of our tickets was an underdog ticket. And that was the Tigers under at plus 110 or 115. You take it. Like, that is money. It's free money. So bet them individually. Your parlay, you'll never go wrong if it hits. Having said that, I'm happy. You know, coming <laughs> off a one and four, yeah. got, you know, three and two today. Looking or good, last night, man. I should say. You know, I like this ticket. It's a very risky ticket. Obviously, you can tell by the odds being so damn crazy, uh, especially with two unders. I usually never go the same on an NBA ticket, but I don't give a shit. Uh, what did you think of Durant's performance last night, man? Honestly, last night, I hope you guys really appreciate what everybody saw. You saw one of the most historic playoff performances ever. Like, Dame, God bless him. Amazing performance uh, last round. He lost. Like, nobody's going to remember that performance next season. We're going to be talking about Kevin Durant. If they get out of the series and make it to the finals uh, or to the conference finals and then eventually the finals and if they win it all, everyone's going to remember the game Kevin Durant put his team on his back. He absolutely balled out. He's the first player since 2018, LeBron James, to play all 48 minutes of a, uh, of a basketball game in the playoffs. Absolutely amazing performance. Uh, honestly, the best performance of his career. The three he had at the end was absolutely bullshit. Only he <laughs> makes that shot. I mean, it made no sense. He's that impossible to defend, man. That mm-hmm. high release like that, like nobody is getting He's, to that. I think his apex is what, eight foot two? When he releases the ball, you're not blocking it. <laughs> He's the most unguardable player we've seen in our lifetime. It's yep. absolutely broken, and I love it. I'm all for it. I just think he can do that more. But He's honestly, just so explosive. That's the thing. Like, like you know. At that last shot, like we all knew he was going to shoot this three. Right. You, you know he's going to do it. His defender knows he's going to do it. You just he played can't it do so anything. smart. He played it so smart. He came out, I don't want to say passive. He was rebounding. He was getting his buckets here and there. He was getting to the free throw line. Uh, he was doing a decent job of getting his teammates in the game. And I want to say midway into the third quarter and for the rest of the fourth, 
It was like, no, no, this is my game. M get away from me. Yep. Harden, you can go 0 for 9 from 3. I don't give a shit. I got you. And you could see him getting a little dog tired yeah. like the last two minutes of the game. He wasn't even bringing the ball up the court. Like he was kind of walking with the set down. But when it came time to he get that big up. shot, he used all the energy People... he had left. And yeah, it was an amazing performance last Dude. night. And being a Kevin Durant fan and a LeBron hater, it's just like. <laughs> Yeah, I, for I you, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. I texted to the group. <laughs> He's the anti-LeBron. Well, like you know, LeBron. Oh, my shoulders are built for this. Then crumbled under the pressure. Mm -hmm. Durant doesn't have shoulders at all, and, and even he carried it. the weight. He didn't even say it. He not only carried the weight. Uh, I think what gets lost in his time in Golden State is he walked up the court back to back finals and nailed the three in front of LeBron James's face to yep. take the series instead of a one-one series, make it a two-zero series, and absolutely kill the, any chance the Cavaliers ever had of beating the Golden State Warriors. I mean, he was obviously the 1A on that team. He was the best player on the court whenever he's played over the last five seasons. Uh, best player in the world right now, no doubt. What you got to say, Fish? Uh, Adam? Yes? Where, where is your football bets? Oh, what, what, what are we doing uh, Euro here? Euro bets? Yeah. Honestly, I got pissed off yesterday because I'm 2-2 I'm two and two betting on the Euros. You lost one game. Yeah, well, and the day prior. I, I went 1-1 one and, one and then 1-1 one and one again. So I don't like that. I, I don't like 50-50 odds so far. I didn't like my, uh, my bets. France uh, won on a stupid own goal instead of drawing. That they was did. dumb. Yeah. So I, I oh, hate soccer. This is why I hate wait, soccer. Wait, wait, wait. But they that's not Germany's own, uh, on an own What goal. happened? What, what ha how did that happen? The that's, dumbass yeah, that's defender. that's Germany's fault. Somebody crossed the ball in, and the defender, instead of, like, clearing it, decided it was a great idea to head it toward the direction of his goalie. It was on the and ground. And it went in he the had, net. It, but the ball was on the ground. It was a low cross. He had nothing he could do. He had He's to, an idiot. He had to kick it he somewhere. He should have let it hit his balls. I, I don't think he should have kicked it, it into his own goal, fish. But if it lets him go, the guy scores it. So he's got to kick it somewhere. He's got to defend. Well, it, not in his, his own, own goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What? Are you, what? <laughs> if, I, if, listen, you're the soccer the expert, okay? The ball's a low cross. If he doesn't get to it, the guy scores. So he's got to do something. Hey, what's that look like on the stat sheet? Is that a minus does, one? It, no, it's a, he, no. There, there's no such thing as that. But uh, if he doesn't if you go get to the it, you score, say, "Oh, that guy's a dumbass." They got to give somebody <laughs> but, the score. Listen, no, like no. I said, get I am not a soccer expert, but I can tell you this: you're not supposed to kick it into your own goal. No, I know. Okay. So he didn't try it's to kick it. It, it hit his heel. It's the equivalent his, in hockey uh, when shin. somebody hits a slap shot, basically, and it deflects off of our defender and it goes in the net. No. But, come on. No, no way. No, wait, wait. Hear me out. So, but in hockey, it's still counted as a goal for the player who shot it. In soccer, it's, they don't give a shit. It's like, you know, you scored on your own team. In hockey, market. it's like it's when you pass it ever. back as a defenseman <laughs> back to your goalie. Like, you, why do you do that? No, you would never do that, but... You know, I don't know. I don't know. It was a stupid goal. Either way. It pissed me off. I didn't want to bet on the Euros today, and that's why. <laughs> well, thank you for your Can bets, Adam. Can you do Adam. it tomorrow? We'll see. Thank you for your bets, Adam. If you want, go to mybookie.com right now. Enter promo code Woodward10 if you want a free $10 account. And like you said, if you, bet, if you bet on that parlay, you could get $539 back with that $10. So it's real easy. Go to mybookie.com right now. Enter promo code Woodward10. You don't have to put any money in. So mm -hmm. I love that. Did and we announce um, as of yet what we're going to be possibly doing with my bookie? today oh no okay you no, can talk they have, about it. They have so not guys, talked about it yet so it hasn't been put up yet but obviously we all know what's going on with stick and easy and we're gonna have betting lines on who you think will win whether it's stick or easy and those will be coming out later today and i'm so freaking excited honestly because i'm gonna they had a mortgage great press i'm gonna refinance my house today and i'm gonna put it all on stick yeah since so. you brought it up <laughs> alex you have a, a little clip from our press conference yesterday me versus easy and uh it's going down tomorrow. Listen, I, you know what? I, I Yesterday I was sitting at home and I feel like I got duped. I was like, man, now I know what Floyd Mayweather feels yeah. like. Some dumbass YouTuber Just talking talk shit. shit. And next thing you know, you're fighting them. Yep. Like, like, that's what happened to me yesterday. So here's a little clip from our press conference. <laughs> we have agreed to one 10-minute round to determine it all. There is not going to be... These are pride rules, okay? We're going back old school. Uh, this will be at Allegiance Gym in Sterling Heights this Thursday at 2 p.m. You gentlemen both agreed to a grappling match and not an MMA match because... Easy. It's real oh. easy to live. I, well, to, to be <laughs> that's fair, pretty much to, it. It's on tape. I said yes to the MMA match. We asked Dick yesterday. He's the one that, that didn't want to do the MMA match. Okay. I mean, if you want to up it right now, homeboy, we can. Go to the really full afraid. side. Go I'm to the really full side. I'm afraid of what's going to happen if I get to kick you in your face. Okay, so... <laughs> honestly, Easy, I, I do have confidence in both of these gentlemen up here, but Easy, with gloves or without gloves, 
And do you agree to a full MMA match, a t one 10 minute round? If we're doing a full MMA match, I think I, I would like a whole camp. I do have court this Friday. Okay. I, I don't want to show up there with any type of black guys, bruises, or anything like that. Uh, see, here we go. Here we go. Yo, here we go. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got court on Friday. Who gives okay. a shit? Okay. Okay. Wait, you got to show up and the judge's going to know you're a pussy? Oh. No, it just looked like I murdered someone. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, was, that was good. All right, go back to the full shot. I, we have agreed to a one 10 minute round grappling match between Stick, Clarence Day, and Fremont. Easy, speakeasy, Jackson. It's easy, baby. I'm going to move the mics aside, and we're going to have these gentlemen face off. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. oh. Broke everything. All right, gentlemen, do not touch each other. Do not touch each other. Um, this is going to be a great fight. Gotcha hat. Oh, no. oh, we did the gotcha hat. Okay, uh, this is going to be a fair fight. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Come on, easy. What okay. you trying to do, man? Okay. Right. You got to wrestle my chest? Okay. What you trying to do? Where the fuck is easy? I don't even see this motherfucker. <laughs> Where'd he go? Okay. Oh, no. oh, okay. About as close as uh, you're gonna Thursday, get, 2 p.m. About as close you're gonna get, Allegiance oh, Gym. It's going down between these two gentlemen, and I can't wait. Oh, he touched the beard. Wilbur Sports. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's 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 go. Oh my god. It doesn't even look right. Like I can no. easy comes my up favorite, here on me. My favorite is is at chair level. Like Adam and I right now, we're, we're about the same height. Mm -hmm. When Easy got off of that chair, he shrunk. <laughs> he <laughs> he shrunk. had to hop down. Like, he did. This and is that the stick stands up and he's like towering him. This is the equivalent of having a semi, no, not semi professional. I mean, just. Somebody who's absolutely much stronger and taller than their opponent. We do not and, know that. And you're pitting them against a midget slash Oompa Loompa slash <laughs> white belt. Slash I mean, low gravity, center of gravity to the ground, and dude's gonna... Have you seen Sticks' hips? What does that mean? They don't lie. They don't lie. <laughs> that don't mean shit. <laughs> All right, we'll find out tomorrow. Listen, yeah, we'll find thing. out if, tomorrow. Listen, if it was a fight, I we can bringing, have this argument. This ain't a fight. Bringing. This is a jujitsu style... I will Match. be bringing five thousand dollars cash <laughs> and putting it on stick that day. Yes. Adam, can you Just make, to make sure my this point. is? Can you make sure this is on your bets tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. It's gonna be yeah. my my uh, my double down bet. And honestly, Ooh. it's um, it's it's gonna be on my bookie too. Mm -hmm. So you can go to mybookie.com. That should be up later today. And exactly, Easy has no answer. I mean, the one thing I am worried about, dude's three hundred pounds. If we get to the ground and he he gets on top of me, it's gonna be tough to get out of that. I, How much I, are I'll, you? I'm I'm uh, 198 according to my scale this morning. Okay, according to my scale this morning, <laughs> is that pre or post uh, using the bathroom? Uh, it's post. I always check post. All right, all right. Get up post. to 200 we... as long as you get up to 200. See, people are starting to see. I got that crazy. Like y'all don't know me. <laughs> like y'all don't know. Like I'm the nice. Thing... I'm friendly. I'm a good guy, but competition brings out a little different animal. Only thing I'm mad about my fighter Easy in this is the way that all he... right, Rob Connington. I see you. The way he giggled. When I saw Rob, Easy that is a giggle, horrible bet. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Yeah, so this is going on tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Like we said, you can place your bets on mybookie.com mm -hmm. later on today. We'll announce it. And um, let's do it right now, too. Let's get somebody qualified for our 25K kick for crypto. I am looking for caller number 5 right now. 313-552-6322 is the phone number. That's 313-552-6322. Caller number 5. You are going to be qualified to get that kick for 25 5k for crypto so once again caller number five right now 313-552-6322 good luck it's woodward sports and when we come back we'll hit you with the coney review hey guys i'm d mac hey guys i'm pilar that was a little slow All right hi i'm d mac i wasn't ready i was doing this hi i'm d mac hey i'm pilar i'm maz you're lit Hi, I'm D-Mac. Hi, I'm Maz. We suck. You Mac. suck. Catch us Monday to Friday, 3 to 5. Every day, right here on The Hook. On Woodward Sports Network. Oh, yeah, that's true. Fish over there answering the phones right now, looking for caller number 5, 313-552-6322, and you will get hooked up with um, a chance to be in our big grand prize 25k kick for crypto and we'll uh, talk to that caller right after coney reviews joey it's monday so let's get our coney review and this was a special one because we went out to petoskey over the weekend and <laughs> we found a coney -ish. and we found a coney ish <laughs> Oh, 
boy stick. Atta boy stick, making me proud. Making me proud stick. So we are at Petoskey Brewing right now. And you gotta meet our friend Doc. Stick? Yep. Doc is over here schooling us because there's a beautiful group of ladies back yeah. there. And I was looking, I'm not exploring, I am engaged, but I was exploring. So, Doc said, hey, I saw you looking and I got some advice. Yeah, give them, give them your card and tell them to call you up sometime. Now pick the one you like, and chances are you'll get a call. You'll get a call. That's a reverse thing and today. You know, that's what it is. A reverse thing. A reverse psychology. Except I did that 50 years ago, and it really worked. <laughs> you end up marrying her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Did it work in your favor, though? Well, sort of. For, for a couple years. <laughs> no. We are here in Petoskey. We're looking at the menu and show them what the bottom of that menu says. It says right dog. here, American dog, hot dog with bun, add chili for a dollar. So we're like, you know what? Why don't we do a Coney review while we're in Petoskey? So we added some onions to it. Yep. Only thing is missing stick. I already put mine on. The oh, mustard. Oh, yeah. Ahead of the game? Yeah. Now you can tell this is not a Detroit style Coney. It's got the beans. And it's all got that. the beans. Like they just put chili literally on a hot dog. So. Yeah. How you, guys, how you guys doing? You look good. Locally owned. Okay. Looking good. You look beautiful. Look good. Love it. Uh, you can already tell it's got good char on the dog. Yeah. It's going to be good. The, the bun's bun is soft. unreal. It's like a pretzel toasted, type bun. Toasted. You got to do the wiener touch. Wiener touch. It might be brioche. Scale of 1 to 100. Let's go. Yes. Here we go. Yes. All of the yeah. beans. <laughs> the beans ruin it. <laughs> so, uh, you know how they got Flint dogs? Petoskey dogs do not work. See, I don't mind this. Really? The chili's sweet. The bun is amazing. The bun's good. The hot dog's meaty. Yeah, the, the, yeah, but the dog is like, it's not that great. It wasn't cooked well. It's weird having beef on top of it like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, man. For being four hours away from home, this is a damn good Detroit Coney. I want to go back home. <laughs> I want to go home. Mom, I want to come home. So what are you giving it, Joey? <laughs> yeah, one to a hundred. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going lower C. I'm going like 70, 72 on this one. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not that bad, No, man. the bun is good. That's it. That's the only points I'm giving this one, or else it would have been a D. Maybe I had too much beer, because this tastes good to me. And it's too girthy, it don't all fit in your mouth. <laughs> Work on your jaw. <laughs> I'm gonna go 81. Low 80s. Just over 79. Like, like 81. There's none of that Coney love taste in it though. Yeah. It doesn't have it. I mean, I, 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 yeah. Well, it's look. not trying to fake to be a Detroit. Like, they clearly just grabbed the chili out of the back and threw right. it on there. As a hot dog, it's good. <laughs> yep, hot dog is good. Coney, eh, but I'll still give it a. A low B. Because it's not bad. It's just not Detroit Cone. So, Potoski Brewery, right here, beautiful place, great beer. Not known for their cone. Waste staff is amazing, environment, absolutely amazing. So, definitely come check it out. But Pony. Try a burger. Yeah, try the menu. Look at the menu. They, they are known for their burgers. They, they did say that. You're right, Justin. Still got to finish it, though. That's etiquette. There we go. There we go. It was a uh, literally a different Coney review. Like they just they just scooped out their chili that they normally put in the bowl and threw it over. Um, I will say this though, Corey has not stopped raving about their uh, veggie burger. Oh, you yeah. got breaking news or something, Corey? What's going on? Corey's got this look on his face. Breaking news from Brian Windhorst. Kawhi Leonard is expected to miss Game 5 tonight in the Jazz as he suffered a knee injury. His status for the rest of the series is in doubt. Ooh. Ooh. Is that like James Harden in doubt where he still plays? Oh, wow. Holy <sighs> shit. Is Paul George going to have a Kevin Durant moment? He has. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, he gets his nickname Playoff Peaback if he does. Oh, my God. That is crazy. What's up, Fish? Sorry about the mics. The screen just popped up, and I was worried that we lost connection with the caller, but we did not. We're all good. All right. Well, okay, we're qualifying fish. somebody so, right now. I had, a mini, get... I had a mini heart attack, and then I got back on the mic, so we're all good. Nah, Fish, you're a hard worker. Don't worry about it. Let's, let's get this winner on right now, though. We're qualifying people to be in our 25K kick for crypto. And who we got on the line, Fish? We got Vinny from Macomb County. Vinny! What up, Vinny? What's going on, guys? How you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I've been trying to win this, and I'm happy I finally uh, called through and qualified. Yeah, awesome. what's um? Where are you calling from? Macomb. What's going on in Macomb today? Um, not too much. Just you know, working and listening to you guys like every morning. It uh, definitely helps make the work day go by a lot quicker and more enjoyable. I love you guys' show. Hey, man, we love you, too, and uh, you are now qualified for that 25K kick for crypto. It's uh, going to be happening at the end of July, um, and all you got to do is show up. And if you're a finalist, you get to get a kick. If you kick the ball 35 yards into the back of our pickup, guess what? You get that 25K in crypto. Do you have a specific crypto that you would be buying? Oh, yeah, for sure going for some more Bitcoin. I already got a little bit of it. A lot more would be great. <laughs> yeah, it would. Hey, yeah, that's what we all wish that one, Vinny. So do you got any experience with kicking, <laughs> football, soccer player? What you got? Uh, not too much. You know, just maybe like a little bit of recess back in the day. So I'm going to have to get my kicking leg working again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome, man. It's going to be such a fun competition. So uh, you are now qualified to be in it, and congratulations. Thank you for calling, and have a great day in McCall, man. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, you too. Yeah, Fish is going to get your information. We're going to put you on hold, and uh, we'll see you at the finale for the Kick for Crypto with Woodward Sports Network. Awesome. So um, let's do this. We got a, is, he, is he on the line? Nope, not yet. Okay, we got a guest coming up next from Sports Illustrated, and he covers a lot of University of Michigan. So, obviously, uh, there is big things going on on University of Michigan's campus today. There's going to be a press conference talking about Bo Schembechler and some of his former players gathering to take down their st the statue and rename uh, Bo Schembechler Hall. So, we're going to talk about all of that coming up next on the Woodward Sports Network. Hey, it's Joey from Woodward Sports at my favorite downtown Fenton, Bridge Street Exchange. Let's go check out their beautiful store. You know we love Michigan summers. Got to turn up on the lake. Pre-made mixed drinks. They even got their own beautiful Bridge Street Exchange t-shirts. I got mine on. Jewelry, they got you here. I got mine on. Titanium Buzz. If you're not quite ready to ask that big question yet with the jewelry, look nice for your girl they got polos and last but not least the most comfortable shoes on the planet hey dude they're literally called hey dude shop here at Bridge Street Exchange downtown Fenton support a locally owned business welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show, live on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. Thank you guys for waking up with us, being a part of the conversation. Love you dropping your comments in the chats. And uh, you know what? Right now, let us know where you're watching because I always like to do this. We get people saying they're from all over the place, and we just, you know, talk to Vinny from Macomb. So let us know where you're watching. Doing the old um, Yahoo uh, chat, the AOL age sex location check right now in the chat on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. So thank you guys for that. Um, this is a conversation we always got to have because it's in the news. It's not a conversation I don't think any of us on this desk are comfortable with. Um, but... More stuff is coming out with what is going on at Michigan and Bo Schembechler. Obviously, his, um, his son spoke last week and with some other victims of the, the allegations of being abused by the doctor. And then, of course, this week, Jim Brandstander, the voice of the Michigan football team, came out. And I don't want to say he defended Bo, but he definitely... You could definitely tell what side he yes. was on yeah. with what he was saying. And we're going to have a contributor for Sports Illustrated on in just a few minutes to kind of walk us through uh, the majority of those quotes and comments. But really, today at 11 o'clock, so in less than two hours, there's going to be a bunch of former players 
that are going to be out at University of Michigan trying to get Bo Schembechler's name removed from buildings, statues torn down, and then you have the opposite side, like the Jim Brandstanner, who's saying, listen, Bo's other son and Bo's wife are saying the exact opposite of what Bo's first son is saying. A adopted son, but I don't like saying that because it kind of discredits him as a son. Right, when, right. When you adopt someone, they're your son. But to differentiate the two, that's what, that's what I'm using. So his biological yeah. son and his wife say that this is untrue, that the, the, the adopted son is lying, that there was no truth to what he was saying. So here we are in a he said, she said situation. And then there's several he saids, and there's a few she saids. So it's going to be interesting how this all plays out. Yeah, I read Jim Brandstatter's um, comments, and I want to make sure I say this correctly. <laughs> right. You got to be delicate, man. I felt that he took the statements from Matt Schimbeckler and he called them into question based off the timeline of what actually happened with Bo's career. And I think that's, you don't want to go into victim shaming, and I don't think that he did that, but I think that it's it's fair what he did put out there. Like, hey, based on the timeline that Matt is talking about and the timeline of Bo's arrival to Michigan and, and everything like that, there seems to be that there could be some inaccuracies. And if, if any of you, if you in, in that aspect, I did not have a, really a big problem with what he with what 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 Jim said. It's it's just main sort of like yo, what, what's the context? Right. But the biggest thing here for me with this whole thing is that I've said it before regarding this. Bo is dead. Doctor Anderson is dead. So it's like right now, it's going to just be the people's opinions of the it's gonna be the opinions of the players verse and, and um matt schenbeckler versus you know bo's biological son and his wife and it's like there's unless somebody comes out with some damning evidence it's just gonna be opinion versus opinion versus opinion and if bo was alive and dr anderson were alive and you were able to get some evidence clarity hard, hardcore evidence that hey bo did know about this and did nothing then you know what you would have to bring that statue down you would have to rename shim beckler hall where they hold the press conferences for when, when when media talks to coaches like jim um jim harbaugh right but right now it's still i i, I just don't know enough but Michigan has one of, if not the largest, alumni network of any college in the country. If there is enough pressure to have Bo's name removed and Bo's statue to come down, it's going to happen. Yeah, well, here's um, Jim Brand Center's quote. It's not just me. There are hundreds of other players that find these charges hard to accept and square with Bo Schembechler that they knew. And then he also said, uh, we as a group are working together to support Shemi, which is Bo's son, and Kathy, who have both been publicly stated that Matt's comments were inaccurate. If the media wants to ridicule me, then they can ridicule uh, Bo Schembechler's son, Shemi, and Bo's wife, Kathy, also, because they have agreed that Matt's statements were inaccurate. It. So, you know, it. you have 850 people that said it happened, and now you're having hundreds of former players that say it couldn't have happened, which I don't know how they would know regardless. They're just saying uh, based off of what they know. But we have our guests joining us. Joey, I'll let you do the intro since you're so great at intros. Yeah, we got to welcome Brandon Brown of the Wolverine Digest. He is a publisher of Sports Illustrated, and he's actually down in Ann Arbor, and this press conference is going down in about 40 minutes welcome brandon yeah thanks for having me guys appreciate it yeah no problem so i mean we know generally just what we've been reading and stuff like that have we missed anything in between there besides of hey we're all just kind of in a wait and see pattern on what really happened yeah i mean there's 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 some pretty widely accepted things at this point and then there's still some things that i mean people are, you know, asking for, for hard evidence. I need some proof. Well, I mean, you're not going to get like a video of Dr. Anderson and, and Bo Schembechler talking about what happened. You're not going to get photo evidence. There, there were no emails. There were no texts back then in the, you know, the seventies and the eighties. So you're, you're going off of uh, you're, you're going off of victim testimony with it, you know, with the numbers into the 
eight hundreds uh, in terms of who was assaulted by the doctor. And then you're going off of, you know, player accounts of it was common knowledge. Everybody in the in the building knew about Dr. Anderson's behavior. Everybody knew it was a thing. Everybody was uncomfortable about it. But, it, you know, some people say they told Bo. Some people say they didn't tell Bo because they were fearful of losing their scholarship. I mean, there was there's so many people involved over such a long period of time that it, it's it's really hard to say exactly who did what and who said what so long ago. But at, at, at the very least, Michigan and the football program failed a lot of people. And I, I, that, that's that's kind of where I always keep coming back to. Even if some people can't get on board with like what Bo knew or what he did do or what he didn't do, at the end of the day, he promised a lot of people, a lot of players, a lot of parents that he was going to take care of their son, and, and that didn't happen. I mean, so as the CEO of the football program and somebody who prided himself on leadership and knowing everything about his program, this is a pretty big thing to not know about, if, if he truly didn't know. Um, you, you obviously have a pulse on the campus and the culture. Um, have you noticed, and it's probably obvious, but how big is the divide becoming within the campus? That, that's one of the bigger things I was thinking about on the drive over here when I was getting ready to talk to you guys is just how this has become such an ugly thing, man. It's like, it's like team bow versus team victims. And that's like, that's really sad because that's not, that's not really what it needs to be about at the end of the day. But it, but it has done that. I mean, there's a divide between, you know, a lot of times it's kind of the older generation. I mean, it's not strictly an age divided thing, but a lot of times it's the older generation who is who revered Bo and just can't can't wrap their head around how this could possibly happen. Like I was five years old when Bo coached his last game, so I don't have a vendetta against him. I'm not like a huge fan of him. So I'm just trying to take everything for what it's worth at face value. And it just seems like a really a really bad situation that he either should have known about or if if he did know about it, he definitely should have done something about it. But so then you've got, you know, former players who are victims and say they told Bo. And then you've got some former players who say they didn't tell Bo, but they were still victims. And you've got some former players who said that never happened. It's just you've got regents that are on both sides of this thing. It's turned into this massive divide and kind of forgotten in all of this is that there are victims who were sexually assaulted for you know, the better part of 30 years while being, you know, students at Michigan. It's just been, it's just turned into this crazy circus thing that nobody wanted to see happen, but it's, it's, it's only going to get worse. I mean, more and more people are going to come out, more people are going to want to tell their story, more people are going to say they told Bo, which we're expecting to hear from some players today. So it, it's just, uh, it's just turned into a really unfortunate thing. And a lot of people seem to forget, like there's, there's victims involved. It's not like, do you stand for Bo or do you stand for the victims? Um, and it's turned into like this, it has. It's turned into this massive divide among a, a really, really big and powerful fan base, region board, everything, everybody involved with the Block M. So, Brandon, with Bo and Dr. Anderson no longer being here, there is really no type of adjustment you can bring those two men to. So with that being said, have you been hearing anything about th within the, the, you know, your sources about push pre put pressure being put on the university to bring down that statue to rename Shim Beckler Hall like what do, what do you what have you been hearing will be the ultimate end game for for um, the U of M's response to this I mean yeah that's that's really the thing that's kind of strange is there's been almost no discussion from Michigan's end I mean President Schlissel put out a small you know a very small very vague statement um one of the regents put out a really small statement when, you know, Jim Harbaugh kind of got cornered at a camp and said a little bit about it. I know obviously Jim Brandstatter said a lot, but I mean, those guys aren't decision makers, but it's, it's been strange that there hasn't been any sort of official, you know, message from Ward Manuel or message or out in front of people to field questions from president Schlissel or the, you know, a statement from the entire board of regents. It's just been kind of radio silence for a while. I mean, I think, Whatever happens today with this many players and where they're setting up shop and what they're about to talk about, I, it's going to force the hand a little bit, I think. But, I mean, yeah, the trophy or the, the statue and the name on the building, like that's a that's a small part of it. I think obviously there's going to be a, a massive, massive lawsuit that comes out of this. You know, whatever else needs to happen, that's that's for the victims to decide. I mean, that's not for anybody else to say you do or don't deserve this. And we just really haven't heard anything official from from that group or from the university so that's we're, we're kind of waiting to see what happens at this point and every passing day something else seems to happen you know we've uh, on our website we do a live stream and we're like all right we're gonna we're gonna let this rest for a little while and then brandstatter does the two interviews and then right. there's a statement released by bo's family and now there's this big press conference today like it's not gonna go away big 10 media days is in about a month 
The season's about two months away. I mean, this thing is not going to go anywhere, and it's going to be around for a while until until the University of Michigan does step up and say something definitive and start to put some things in place that, that has some tangible evidence that they care and that they're doing something for the victims. In, in your opinion, are they waiting to, like, just – clear all the facts get the story straight or are they waiting for a court decision on this or you know because they could they could get in front of this and you know take steps to at least show good faith but at the same time if they jump off that bridge they're kind of admit, admitting guilt right yeah that's the thing i mean it's like i said it seems pretty widely accepted that that a massive number of of assaults took place by the doctor that's where it gets a little strange like so many people believe the victims when they say they were assaulted by Dr. Anderson, but then those same victims aren't believed when they said they told Bo or that they told somebody or that they don't believe why they didn't say anything. I mean, there's just been so much back and forth that I don't know. I don't know what the university is waiting for. I don't know what their official step is going to be. Like I said before, you know, that, that age gap and the people who are really, you know, writing the big checks and making a lot of big decisions are from Bo's generation. I mean, they're, they're, they're people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s in some cases. And that's, you know, Bo would be 92 years old if he was still here today. So it, it's just a mess, man. It's a mess. We talked about the divide earlier. It's across the board within the program, within former players, within the regents, within the alumni base. And it just, there's no easy fix. And it's not really about a fix necessarily. It's about doing the right thing for the victims and then making sure that everybody who was involved can at least get to a place where they're 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 content and can get on with their lives again because in some cases it got really bad for some of these guys and that's what that's right. what I think people really need to focus on. Yeah, well, Jim Brand Center, you brought him up, came out and he was defending Bo's wife and his son Shemi, uh, saying that what Matt said was completely false. It was not true. Him getting punched in the chest and all of that. Um, it, it's just it's got to be almost damn near impossible. And I think you hit the nail on the head by saying I don't know. And I think a lot of people <laughs> yeah. need to take that stance and quit being so steadfast in what they think and understand that none of us know, period. And I don't think we're ever going to know. Let's just All we can do is hope that if there were victims and there are victims, that they feel that they can come forward, they can talk about this, and that they're going to get their retribution in the end. Because I'm in the camp of I, I, I don't want to make a decision either way. If he did it, burn it all down. Get rid of Bo in every aspect. Ooh. If he didn't, this is kind of a weird situation, and it's going to be hard to manipulate and get around in general. Yeah, it's... I kind of find myself coming to this, regardless of where you fall, regardless of how you take the evidence, whether you believe the victims or not. And Matt Schembechler has been dragged through the mud a little bit. And, there's, you know, he's done some things in the past that make you question his credibility. But in my opinion, you don't even, you don't even need him. You don't need him. You, I mean, there's, there's 800 former athletes, and then there's 40 players that are getting ready to talk today. We're getting into, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight guys who have said that they told Bo. I don't think you need Matt Schembechler to talk at all. But, I mean, whatever. That's, that's there. It is what it is. Do what you want with that. I think there's enough other evidence to say that that something horrible happened and that, like I said, there's one of two camps. Either one, Bo knew and didn't do anything, and that's deplorable. Like you said, burn it down, send him to the moon. Or two, he didn't know, which kind of makes it seem like he wasn't very good at his job. I mean, right. he's the head coach at Michigan for 20-plus years, has books written about his leadership skills, and, and by every player who's ever played for Bo Schembechler will say he knew everything. He knew what my class schedule was. He knew if I missed a class. He knew if I got a speeding ticket. He knew if I got in a fight. He knew who my girlfriend was. He knew my parents. He knew my siblings. But he didn't know about this when it was widely talked about among the, everybody in the program. And there, I mean, even Brandstatter, who was like defending Bo to the death, said like, "Oh yeah, we all knew about what Dr. Anderson did. We it was it was kind of talked about. It was joked about. You know, Doctor, drop your drawers. You got a toe. You got a toe injury. You go see him. He's gonna pull your pants down and play with you for a little bit. Like what?" How does everybody know about that? But then some people are going to sit there and say that Bo didn't know. I just, I can't get, I can't get there. But either way, if you don't think he knew, then he wasn't very good at his job. And if you do think he knew, then, then letting it go on for 30 plus years is, is disgusting. I mean, that, that's where I'm at. Yeah, but yeah, Brandon, that's what I kind of want to get into. And you just lead, you led right into my question. Do you think, in your opinion, that Michigan is intentionally being blind to Bo's knowledge of this because he's one of their most revered figures in their in their in the university. Because if he goes, because if you because if you 
um, if, if Bo's legacy is tarnished, it doesn't mean that the whole University of Michigan is bad, but it is a black eye because he's one of their most revered figures. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, so much of what, you know, Michigan football is now is because of what Bo did and his ideals and his values. And obviously that's kind of, you know, put on steroids a little bit that Jim Harbaugh is the current head coach and is one of, you know, Bo's most famous players and, you know, looked up to him in a big way, the star quarterback. I mean, the, the, a myriad of reasons why Bo's legacy has been carried on the way it has under Jim Harbaugh. I, it's it's such a tough thing. I mean, it was a long time ago. Things were different back then. Bo was arguably the most powerful guy in Ann Arbor. I mean, like, he could he could get away with anything back then. I mean, I, I don't think there's anybody who – like, if Bo Schembechler said, like, all right, we want to – we want to shut down a city block in Ann Arbor. It's done. I mean, it's done that <laughs> afternoon, you know? I mean, so it, it's it's really tough to say, you know, who who knew what, what was intentionally done, what wasn't intentionally done, what was brushed aside as not that big of a deal. I, it, it's, just, it's just such a mess, man. It's just such a mess all the way around. And like I said, when you get down to the very bottom of it, either Bo knew and didn't do anything, which is terrible, or he had absolutely no idea, which means he – he fell way short of what his responsibilities were as the head coach and taking care of these guys. You know, he sits down in living rooms with these players as he's recruiting them and says, this is leaders and best. You're going to get the best education. You're going to get the best medical attention. You're going to get the best, uh, you're going to get the best nutrition, the best training, and you're going to play at the best university in the world. And I'm going to take care of your son. And he didn't do that. If right. he didn't know, he didn't do that. So I, I just, I don't know how you have a trophy. Uh, I keep saying trophy, a statue of that guy in either of those cases. If he knew and covered it up, the worst of the worst. If he didn't know, why, why do you, how, how can you have a statue up of that guy who failed so many people over the years on ignorance? I, I don't know, I think that's a tough sell. It's just crazy when you look at this whole thing. I mean, there's no text evidence. There's gonna be no security footage yeah, on this one. Neither of the people involved are even alive. So this is gonna be a case that I mean, I don't know how the court of law handles things like this, but it's going to be really interesting to kind of just see it unfold. And I mean, we're in this this obviously cancel culture, and there's there's a side where, of course, if he did this, that's the worst thing in the world. How many people, like upwards of a thousand individuals, that have gone mm -hmm. through this Dr. Anderson? But then on the other side, I mean, we got to see these details and really see it to understand this better. That's where it gets that's where it gets so much deeper and why it's it's really not just Bo and Dr. Anderson because there's a lot of other people who who are in positions of power at the time that are still alive and haven't really said anything in any direction. I mean, you know, Gary Moeller was part of Bo's staff for 20 plus years and then became a head coach himself. Same thing with Lloyd Carr. Both of those guys are still alive. Dr. Anderson was the team doctor while those guys were in power as well. You know, Gary Gary Moeller's pretty elderly and not in the best of health in terms of his memory and I think he has some dementia and then you know poor Lloyd Carr man over the last couple of years losing his grandson and just recently lost his wife I mean that's going to be a tough interview to try to sit down with him and ask him about some of this stuff but it's it's beyond football too I mean the, the athletic department different people who are making decisions about the staff it, it's bigger than just Bo and Dr. Anderson but it, you know at Michigan Michigan football is king and that's the bulk of when this was going on and that's why some of these players are coming forward and say they told Bo and that's kind of where it's at right now, but that's why I keep saying like this is so far from being settled and over that it's just gonna, more is going to keep coming out, more is going to keep coming out. And yes, in terms of actual hard concrete evidence, like you talked about text messages or email chains or video, photo, audio evidence, that's not going to be there. But that's never there in these kinds of cases because it happens behind closed doors between a doctor and a patient or a doctor and a and an assistant or a priest and a young. I mean, like you, the, all the. All the examples of these types of things that have taken place over time, there's never hard evidence proof. But when you get when you get into the numbers that we're talking about here, it just it just gets to a point where it feels like something needs to be done. Well, Brandon, I appreciate your time this morning. I know you're out there for that press conference or rally or whatever they're calling it uh, with the former players hoping to, you know, fire up people to get that statue down and change the name of the building. Uh, thank you for sifting through all the mess. And, um, you know, Trying. All, all we can do is take in the information and adjust our opinions accordingly. So thank you very much for being a part of the show this morning. Uh, let us know if anything, you know, newsworthy pops off out there today. And, uh, yeah, we, we appreciate you calling in from Ann Arbor. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. That's Thank you, Brandon. A, Thank you. That's Brandon Brown. Um, he, he writes for SI and also a publisher for uh, what is Wolverine it? Digest. Wolverine Digest. So 
Man, he's got a tough job right Hard now. Hardest like, job. He's going to piss off half of the readers no matter what he puts out. Yeah. Because, yeah. Cause like he said, there's such a divide on the campus right now. Like, let alone society. I'm talking just in that Michigan bubble. There is the Bo believers versus the Bo non-believers. And it's it's got to be tough to be in that situation. So thank you, Brandon, for coming on with us this morning. Coming up next, we got Joey's News. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. And at Hall Financial, we treat our clients like family. And our number one priority is giving each of our clients five-star service. Our passion for five-star service, combined with our expertise, allows us to find the best possible solution for refinancing your home loan. We take the time to focus on both the individual and the numbers. We're gonna walk you through the process and close your loan in half the time of our competition. Go to davidhallmortgage.com today. Good morning, everyone. Extra, extra, read all about it. Let's get into Joey's news. Let's go. Man, the biggest night of Kevin Durant's history of his career, he came to ball out and, you know, he had none of his superstar teammates. He did have James Harden, but the dude definitely did (laughs) not play so hot, dropping only five points in 46 minutes. But Kevin Durant, 49 points, 17 rebounds. 10 assists in every single minute of this game. He didn't sit down for a second. 48 minutes played. It was the virtuoso. I mean, it it was art. (laughs) It was poetry in motion. This shot right here. Boom! Right over. Like, look at Coddington. Like, what do you want me to do? And then you go back to the game prior when everyone's like, oh, P.J. Tucker stopped him. He shut Kevin Durant down when he was guarding him. zero points. Yeah, how'd that go, P.J. Tucker? I mean, he did. Like, listen. He was the best potential defender in that game, so I don't want to knock him entirely, but you still got 49 points on you. There was a tweet last night that crystallized it this best. Kevin Durant may not have ever told Jay Williams to not compare him to Giannis, but he damn sure played like it. <laughs> I mean, that's all I got to say. I forgot about that him. little drama. Yeah. He didn't even want to guard him. No, no, that was... That was a great performance last night. And, you know, like when they were down 17 early, I thought it was going to be a blowout. And I Mm -hmm. I was like, damn it, because I'm rooting for the Nets because I like Durant so much. I hate Griffin, but I love Durant so much. I I want to see him take the team over the top so we can stop this debate about him having to hop to teams to win championships. Like, no, he's he was the man wherever he went. And on that, Giannis postgame had some words to say. And I love this because this is just the competitor in him. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Just keep making it tough. Uh, obviously, one of the best scorers to ever play the game. Uh, it's it's kind of it's tough. It's tough. You know, like, he, he's the best. He's the best player in the world right now. And uh, we got we to gotta beat him as a team. We got to guard him as a team. We got to make him um, make tough shots like tonight. Uh, and we just got to keep doing our job and hopefully like he, hopefully he's going to miss. Uh, and when you have a soft leader like that in Giannis, <laughs> this is how the rest of their team reacts. I love this so much. I mean, he's Kevin Durant. I promise we tried. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the ultimate just defeated uh, attitude. Like, like uh, I tried. Please, we uh, tried. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know what? Soft as hell. I would take that reaction over Giannis's. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a two time MVP. You're supposed to play better than that. That's Pat Bev and that's Lou Will. They're supposed to be like, hey, that's Kevin. That's Kevin Durant. Yeah, but the thing is, Giannis didn't try because Giannis yeah, didn't step yeah. up to the plate and guard Durant <laughs> when, time, when it was crunch time. That's why I don't want to hear that from him. Right. Like, like, oh, you know. You didn't After try the to series stop him. is over, okay, say that whatever you got to do. No, but he in didn't the try middle, to guard Kevin Durant. I don't want to hear that from you. Like, oh, was so distraught. Like, if he, if KD lit you up and you were that distraught, it'd be like, okay, you know, shit. What you want me to do? You didn't try to stop him. Right. You didn't. You, you didn't try to use your limp to 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 disrupt him from. Yeah. And really, who the hell was he guarding? Yeah. Blake? <laughs> like, what are you doing with all that talent? You're supposed to be former defensive player of the year. Like, Brooke you're supposed Lopez to be is supposed that to be, dude. Brooke Lopez is supposed to be guarding Blake. You're supposed to be guarding Kevin Durant. Right. Flat. Brooke Lopez was on Jeff Green for some time of the game, and Jeff Green balled out seven for eight from three-point range. Hey. Shooting lights out. 
Durant out to Green for three. Beautiful. Good defense, Giannis. <laughs> I love that everybody's talking about the former Super Sonics, Sonics. teaming up last night. Is God, man, the Sonics was so long ago. The fact that KD and Green both played for them, like it's almost just a memory that at this point. Rookie year, yep. Disapp honestly, I'm just disappointed. Like the, you're ahead 17 points, and they still can't close out that game. Obviously, KD did come out to play the best he's ever played. But, man, that ending to that game was crazy. So my big question to you guys, do you play James Harden in game six? I do not. No. Both I, of you I, say I, no. I, I, don't think you, I don't think you have to play James Harden in game six. I think KD still could have went off of that without James Harden last night. Um, James Harden is a defensive liability. They probably could have um, won the game a lot earlier had um, he not played. So I would sit Harden for game – I would sit Harden for game six – let him sit out the rest of this series, you know, hope, put it put it away tomorrow night and give him a couple of days rest and then revisit. Yeah. Um, you see, was it Reggie Miller that tweeted that out, that they should sit KD and James Harden that was in the, game he, six? He did, that was a clickbait, <laughs> get people to he argue. He said him. what? He said sit KD and James Harden in game six and push all your chips towards game that, seven. Because of KD played so many minutes. And I'm yeah. like, Reggie. What? I, he, yeah. Did no, just no. Just no. You don't have to do that to get to get the response, wow. man. Just no. And I actually liked him. I respected him. <laughs> I mean, it's that, a strategy. I don't. That think is that. not a strategy to sit him a, the whole game. I wish a strategy is sitting James Harden. James Harden and KD is just idiocy. But I mean, outside of all the the KD's greatness, Mike Budenholzer needs to be fired. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I I, I would have. I don't care what would who who would have coached Game Six for me. I would have fired him after that game. Flat out. See, but at some point, though, it's on the players. I mean, yeah, 17, like, you, they were up 17. They were doing something right in that game. It's, it's on the players, but if you're a coach and you can't get your guys to stop that bleed, you can't push the right buttons to get them to respond, and just the way their offensive game plan just went, that's a fireable offense. My new favorite player in the NBA is the Joker's brother because this <laughs> dude – is amazing when the Joker was getting into it the other day with Devin Booker and ended up getting ejected eventually. This is his brother. I love this. You know you're a badass when you wear camo under a jersey. Yeah, I never seen that before. <laughs> guy's a beast dude we got look at security guards though like those two people are gonna stop that guy my favorite too is the security guards wearing a mask but he gets closer to his brother and he takes his mask off so he could hear him crazy hey it defeats man the purpose i ain't scared of nobody but i ain't messing with no serbs and no russians i can have that <laughs> with the tattoo, tattoo on the neck too on top of that Jason Tatum has committed to playing USA basketball at this summer's Tokyo Olympics. And Fish, I know you love some summer basketball. Let's go Olympics! I can't wait for Olympic basketball, man. I love it. I, I love I just, it. I, I, it's cool seeing USA dominate at something like this, too. At everything, because we're the best. But, I mean, here's the thing, though. Our these guys going to dominate because this newer generation of players, they do they have the skill set? Yes, they do. They have the skill set to go out there and perform at the highest clip. The problem is, do they have the dog in them to go out there and try to seek and destroy? That's what these last couple of Olympic teams that we that the um the country has had were. They were out to ever since that debacle that about Larry Brown in two thousand and four. We've been out to seek and destroy. And we go to the umpire making Casey Mize switch his glove because they said the colors matched his sleeve. So I don't even know about this rule right here. Mid-game, they made him switch it up. And this is what he had to say. Did the, the home plate umpire, what was wrong with your first glove? I didn't get that. Yeah, he, he said the color, the, the gray color was too light. Because um, I assume everyone thinks that I was using sticky stuff now. So... Um, which I was not. Um, so I, I just thought the timing of it was pretty, you know, honestly. So um, either the umpires need to get on the same page uh, because I've made 12 starts, you know, and everybody was fine with it. 
or John Tampain just needs to have some feel and just let me pitch, you know, with the glove that the other team did not complain about. You know, he brought it up himself. So uh, John's a good umpire and a very nice guy, but I mean, just have some feel of the situation because I hate that I'm in a position now where I assume everyone thinks I was using sticky when in reality that was not the situation at all. And that's the glove you And that wasn't the situation at all. And it, it is weird that an umpire called him out for that. Like I said earlier, it's usually on the other team to be mm-hmm. like, hey, it's distracting our batters. Can you fix that? And that's what asshole coaches do to throw off good pitchers. Like, I was an umpire. Is it really for 15 that distracting? Um, it's in the rules. It, it, it can be distracting, yes. Like, it, you know, like I said, if the leather is hanging off is dangling, it can distract them. If yeah. you're wearing sh- something shiny, anything white on yeah. your throwing arm, like, can look like a baseball when it's coming through. So, yes and no. But, like I said, I umpired for like 15 years, all the way up to college level. And. You every once in a while, when you knew an ace was on the mound, the opposing coach would raise hell about every little detail <laughs> just to throw that kid off as his game, and it's it's gamesmanship. But for an umpire to just do it out of nowhere, eh, kind of weird. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want you to not be distracted in your career because you got to just switch it all up entirely and check out Northwestern Tech because it's only ten and a half month hands on HVAC program. And this is hands-on with no sticky substance like Casey Mize that they were all speculating. Right now, go check them out, northwesterntech.edu. It's the HVAC school that works. Welcome to the newest Bridge Street Exchange, not only in downtown Fenton, now in the Somerset Collection. Located on the second level, south side, right next to Lululemon and Starbucks, this is where you can get all the hottest barware or men's grooming products or clothing or oh that's what you meant (laughs) don't forget they got some cool hats too and it's a lot of great local michigan owned companies that you're supporting and don't forget all under three bucks you're such a loser (laughs) but for real take advantage 15 percent off if you come in here tell kevin that woodward sports sent you or stop Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show live on the Woodward Sports Network. And don't forget, you got another chance to qualify for that 25K kick for crypto coming up today at noon with the Belizean and Bell Show. And then another chance to qualify at 4 p.m. with the hook. It is Wednesday, and that means Detroit Dog Rescue is here. And the beautiful Ashley has a pup. What's the puppy's name? This is Ruger. Ruger. Yep. He's about 12 weeks old. And ready for a home of his own. And he's a black lab, I'm assuming? Yeah, black lab mix. Um, oh. He does also have a brother, too, named Nash. Nice. So. Shut what a Ruger. Ruger's face. That's um, a cute pup right there. What's his story? Yeah, so he came to us. Um, he has a few other siblings. Uh, they, The mom dog was uh, pregnant in shelter care, okay. unfortunately. So we got these guys and... They're ready for a home. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Are you fostering any of them? Because I know you were fo- you still fostering Pam. I, Pam actually got adopted last week. Oh, Pam. she did. Yeah, oh, yeah, my mom's going to be disappointed, but I'm glad she yeah, found a good home. Yeah. She, the adopter actually texts me all the time and upstates me, and she's doing great. She, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. She's doing really well. Well, can I hold Ruger real yeah, quick? Absolutely. You know the deal. I'm not going to let these puppies come in here without <laughs> holding them. Hey, we got to say Detroit Dog Rescue was the ultimate plug over the weekend when we were in Petoskey. <laughs> Woody was a hit. A legend. The, he's literally known as a legend. Like People were walking around and saying, oh, that was the... And they would always point. like like They all knew who Woody was because at our Petoskey RV campsite... Everyone was talking about him in the neighborhood. Aww. Yeah, like really, I was walking by people when you know in the morning, and they're like, "Oh my God, that's the uh, Pitbull Corgi mix that everybody's talking about." I was like, "Yeah, that's my dog. That's my dog." Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, he's thank super you. sweet. Super sweet. Guy. Yeah, he's super calm and awesome and warm and fuzzy. Um, and if you're looking for uh, to adopt a dog, we always say go to Detroit Dog Rescue. The way they treat these animals, the way they get them ready to go, and the way that you know, like, look, look at how happy they are. You're not getting, you know, they these they're dogs. They're cute when they're tiny. I like <laughs> yeah. them. Well, and this dog was, you know, even though the mom was pregnant in care, like this dog's lucky enough to be born under your care, Absolutely. so it it doesn't know the the streets, you yeah. know. Like, yep. I still wonder how Woody got his start. Like he was wandering the streets. They said, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. Like that is crazy when you think about it. I mean, you really don't know. Like your dog's story, you have no clue what it was. But whatever DDR, Detroit Dog Rescue, did, 
Turn him into the best, best dog I've ever met. The best dog in the world, and you could have one too. Uh, go to DetroitDogRescue.com right now, and you can check out all the animals that they have available. How many dogs do you have right now, do you think? Um, Right now? Get up on the mic a little bit. Right now, we actually did a big intake, so we probably have about like 50, 55 dogs. Oh, wow. So, okay. And yeah. all different breeds too, yeah, right? Yeah, all you different guys... breeds. We have everything right now, so... So that is awesome. And then if you're not looking for a dog, but you want to support a great Detroit organization, go to DetroitDogRescue.com. And for as little as $5, you can feed this guy for an entire <laughs> week. That's what I love about them. They stretch that $5, make it go a long way. But honestly, Ruger, you are the man. You're going to get a home before. <laughs> oh, he's chill. Yeah. He's, yeah. For a puppy, he's, he's, he's not whiny. He's chill. Nope. We a... drove here. He was great. He passed out in the passenger seat. and. Uh that's yeah, that's great. awesome. You want to hold him, Joey? Of course, I want to hold Ruger. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Ruger. It's crazy for real though. To six point, it's only oh wow, it's a heavy boy. <laughs> <laughs> only five dollars though. That's the craziest thing. Like when you guys first told us weeks ago about that, and he smells really good. It's only five dollars. Like, what's that to you today? Just five dollars. Go online right now, DetroitDogRescue.com, and donate it because look at this pup. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Detroit Dog Rescue, like, we, we talk about it all the time because I know you go on a lot of the rescues and see some things that no human should ever see and definitely no dog should ever experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys do a great job of rescuing these dogs in the city and all around the state and all around the country, too, yeah, right? Yeah, we actually get a lot of dogs from not just Detroit but out of state, too. So um, to help with the overpopulation of dogs, we try and do our work and get in them into as many homes as possible. Awesome. So go to DetroitDogRescue.com today. Uh, donate. And it, like I said, if you don't want to donate money, you can donate paper towels. You can donate uh, puppy mats. You can donate leashes. You can donate yeah. collars. You can donate uh, bleach. What else do you guys need? Um, peanut butter, Nyla bones, towels, blankets are always needed. Peanut um, butter? Yeah. You like peanut, peanut butter? butter? We, peanut butter is really useful, um, especially when we have... Uh, Dogs that need meds and stuff like that. So, okay. and filling Kongs for enrichment. It's always. Note to self. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. get you guys a case of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Meyer to hook them up with some peanut butter. Not, no, not no puppuccino stuff that you get <laughs> Woody over the weekend. Yeah, I got Woody a puppuccino <laughs> awesome. at Starbucks. Awesome. Joey was like, wait, wait, what is that? <laughs> that was a big ass cup of whipped cream. It was just a big cup of yeah, whipped cream. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Woody had his puppuccino. Uh, so, thank you guys coming in every Wednesday. You couldn't make it in last Wednesday because you had an emergency rescue, yeah. which happens from time to time, which we're fully. You know, that's fine. If ever you need to uh, cancel this to go rescue more puppies and more dogs, please don't feel like you're doing us any disservice because awesome. we know you're doing great things for the city and great things for these lives. So DetroitDogRescue.com. Make sure you check them out today. And even if you're not in the market to get a dog, just go check out all the puppies that they have. And they have a nice little profiles built for them, and it's fun to see. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for being Absolutely. so kind. And Look uh, at Vinny tagging his girl on here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Start it, Vinny. Yeah, Come Vinny. on, Samantha. Because you know if she was tagging you, Vinny, you'd be getting this dog. So don't let her do that. <laughs> it is a damn cute dog. It really is. And he's very chill. Such a good dog. So we're going to take a picture after the show. Thank you, Detroit Dog Rescue. Coming up next, we have another animal. His name is Fish, and he's got facts for you. Coming up next on the Woodward Sports Network. So what's up? My name is Sean Belegian. Glad to be a part of Belegian and Bell every day at 11. I'm the guy that gets pissed off at all the stupid sports fans out there. What up, though? I'm Drake Bell here on the Belegian and the Bell Show here at Woodward Sports Network. Tap in to the energetic Sean and the calm, smooth Drake Bell. Time? Yeah, it is. Fish! Go fish. Fish facts. It's fish! Alright, fish, you ready for your facts, buddy? Yes, sir. Let's hear them. Uh, as always, we start with video, and I was struggling to find a video, but I found one. I actually ended up finding two. But we have one video for you today. This is yesterday. This is before the game uh, between France and Germany. Oh my. And this is a... A protester that crashed into the spider cam that oh, they used at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> so it wasn't supposed to be like this. It was supposed to be more calm. Uh, but he crashed into the spider cam that they use at the top. You guys know what the spider cam is? Yep. So he ended up going more rapidly. What uh, was he protesting? He was protesting kick oil, kick out oil. 
Uh, and Greenpeace is part of Greenpeace, which is, I guess, an organization in Germany. Uh, the sponsor is Volkswagen. So I guess he doesn't want them using oil for their car. They couldn't find the information on it. But I found out that the banner he had was kick out oil and the uh, company, or not the company, but the, what's it called? The protester... The group, the group was Greenpeace. So there's okay. one way to do it. You could just streak out there in the middle of the game, or you could parachute into that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so his main intention probably was not he uh, I, he injured uh, injured people. Many people were taken to the hospital. Oh, good for him! So what the, a, what a great protest! So, Injure other people for your cause, yeah. idiot. Well, but again, he wasn't. I guess he didn't. See, he was like a bird. He didn't see the spider cam. Well, okay, but that's he's, he's a warm. He's, he's still a warm up to he's, the dumbass the of the dumb, day. I was gonna say that's a dumbass of the day right there. Yeah. So protests are fine until you start hurting other people or destroying anything. Yeah. So that was minutes before the game. France won the game, and the game was in Germany. So maybe that messed up Germany's morale. I don't know. Did you hear about Ronaldo? Is that in your facts? That is not, but I did hear what he did yesterday. That is crazy to me, and we don't talk much soccer, but Ronaldo got up on the press conference, and there was a can of Coke sitting there, and he moved it away. Yep. And Coke has been the sponsor of that for, what, 34 years or something? Yeah, a long time. And they pulled their entire sponsorship. Ooh. So he just cost them millions. Oof. Billions. Four billion, I think I heard. Millions and billions. So, yeah. All right. Sorry, Fish, to interrupt you, but I know that no. was soccer, so yeah. you'd be interested. Yeah. We got a game right now. <laughs> um, we go to someone who did not crash into the spider cam, who did very well yesterday, Kevin Durant. Yes. He got 49 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you get the rest. He played all 48 minutes, 0 seconds of rest. Mm, LeBron James. <laughs> No Kyrie, Hobble Harden, scored and assisted on the last 43 of 52 Nets points and the first 45, 15, 10 playoff game. What's your uh, LeBron James, man? He used to play freaking 48 minute I've games never, all day. When? Don't 2000, give me no. two, <clears throat> game six, 2018 versus the Boston Celtics. Okay, he did that. <laughs> Corey <correct>. facts. <laughs> yeah, job, yeah, he had my back. <laughs> Good job, Corey. Well, I just know Michael Jordan did like. He had like nine straight years of all eighty-two games, so yep. you don't you don't see that anymore. No. Uh, we go to the uh, San Francisco Giants, who uh, are doing very well. The other team probably crashed into the spider cam. The Giants have won the last two games, or no, have won two games since nineteen ninety, where they trailed uh, by seven plus runs at any point. May third, twenty nineteen, against the Reds. April thirtieth, uh, two thousand four, against the Marlins, and then there's three last night against the Diamondbacks. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they were down by seven plus runs, and they won. Hell of a comeback. Uh, the game was in San Francisco, so okay. sad for them. McCovey Cove, I uh, love that We go feeling. out to today, which is June. Why am I not on? 16. <laughs> uh, the first bit, you guys might like, you, maybe you guys were there. Uh, 1883, the first baseball's ladies' day. At ooh, New York, ooh. Gotham beat Cleveland Spiders 5-2. to two. You're welcome, ladies. You got your own day in 1883. That was a big deal back then to give ladies anything. That was. Yeah. Joey and Corey, you guys uh, went, well, went biking yesterday. <laughs> well, this guy did a marathon walk. Otto E. Funk, 62 years old, did a marathon walk from New York to San Francisco. 4,165 miles or 4,165 miles in 183 days. Would you guys ever consider doing this so so actually the dude that was driving us on the bike he said that he drove his bike from san francisco to detroit wow. i was like damn you do traverse city to ann arbor don't you i do traverse city to like marshall michigan i think it was okay 300 miles though Whew. ain't still. nothing compared to thousands of miles still that 300 is crazy i i don't i've I can't remember the last time i rode a bike period outside the electric bikes that we rode and i maybe pedaled that twice Honestly, that was the best thing we, we drove. Man, from for a biker as myself to have ridden a freaking electric bike and then ride on the back with Hooper like that yesterday, I'm really embarrassing myself. No, oh, you're living that biker dream. <laughs> hey, man, I don't care. I'm getting me one of those bikes from um, up north, you know, with that, with that throttle. Oh, the Pedego. Pedego I'm getting, bikes, I'm getting, yeah. I'm definitely getting a Pedego. On a nice day like this, I'd ride it to work. Yep, shout out to No Way. Uh, speaking of shout out, shout out to the DMAC 1998. Red Wings beat the Capitals 4 1 for a 4 0 series sweep. Tiger Woods won the U.S. Open in 2008. And we had a birthday today. Who? 1970. Guy won the PGA Championship 50 years. Well, he's 51 now. Phil Mickelson. Ah, the oldest PGA champion ever. And this is the tournament that he is looking to win for the first time. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. DMAC will have his golf picks today on the hook from 3 to 5. 
And then there's another crypto winner in between that. So awesome. Great day. Those are the facts. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. We got two days of the weekend. So exciting. Can I can I call someone out, please? Always. Stick. Oh, well, no, not mainly, me. Maybe all three of you people. But Six talks about the weekend on a Wednesday, and you guys are just like, oh, yeah, weekend's coming, so we can yada yada. I bring it up, and you guys are slandering me. Oh, you can't talk about the weekend. It's Monday. Yeah, you count us down every single day. Yeah, because I'm excited for the... I can't be excited for the weekend. On Monday now. <laughs> what, when Six said, you guys are like, oh, okay, cool. That's because weekend. my mom's in town, Fish. I could have something happen and fun this weekend. Well, yeah, like a waking up at 2 a.m. for some pointless-ass soccer game. Well, I am. We got a big fire this weekend. My blues are playing. <laughs> soccer match. I'm sorry. Don't don't just credit Fish's love for sports. Um, we he hates get... the draft. <laughs> yeah, he does hate the draft. I, I don't hate the draft. I just It's not as important as you guys make it seem. It's it, important. It's, it's, it's the important. most important thing to I'm building a franchise. Fish, I'm, I'm telling you right now, but... never say that to any diehard um, Pistons fans or Lions fans. They will run you out the building. Fish, well, Fish, I got to explain this to pick, you. Darko Milicic. We are now sports media, Fish. Yeah. So things like this actually should mean a lot to us because if we don't have this, then we don't have content to cover. So you not caring is kind of defeating the whole purpose of this. Uh, number two pick. What happened there? Uh, which year? I mean, uh, number two pick was also Kevin Durant. Yeah, talk about Troy no, Weaver's I'm picks last Pistons. year. Dark yeah, you're talking about Pistons, but we're talking about the draft period, and that's where the draft lottery, if we get the number one or number two pick, dictates a lot for your future. So it is very important on how teams build their organization, where they land in the draft. It's very important. I know. It's I know how important it is, but it doesn't deserve a... a 500,000 celebration in the streets. No. You weren't even thing. alive for the Darko Milicic draft pick. <laughs> well, okay. Now you're... All right. I'm muting my mic. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and before we get to Joey's dumbass of the day, that make sure incorrect. you check out <laughs> Coast Portland. They have all these cool Put knives. Put that thing away. What you doing why? with that? Why? No, it's awesome. This we is my don't new trust you knife. with it. This is my new pocket knife. Is it really? When I'm walking around the mean streets of Birmingham. Don't give that to Adam. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It'll shank you with it. <laughs> um, but no, they have lanterns. They have headlamps. They have all types of things that you need for all your camping accessories or just outdoor activities. And honestly, I didn't know how much I needed a pocket knife until you actually have a pocket knife. And now I'm just opening boxes easy. Like it's, right. just, it's not a weapon. It's like you no. use it for so many things. Like It's a little, utility tool. Over the weekend how much did you bust out the utility tool oh yeah no i had a machete and i it helped <laughs> me i used it to roast marshmallows with the machete i moved the logs with the machete yep i i made the sticks to roast Sharp, the marshmallows sharpened them up like with everything. the machete so yeah uh coastportland.com if you need any of these products make sure you enter promo code wsn20 and you get 20 percent off which is very nice now it's time for joey's dumbass of the day the Detroit Pistons select Darko Milicic. World's dumbest criminal. Well, so much for me calling him savvy because he had no idea where he's on the field. And he crosses too many timeouts at the technical foul. Dumbass! Honestly, I don't expect anything less in Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky Little League fights <laughs> got real ugly in Kentucky when parents and coaches got into a little bit of an altercation. I want you to watch right here. I'm mad this is the censored one. So the coach involved came out with a big apology and everything, but it's just as a coach to kids. Right, you can apologize all you want. Those kids are going to remember that for the rest of their lives. Like yes. I remember Little League, and I don't want to name his name, but you know, Mister, I still remember who it was. Got gotten fights at almost every tournament we rent, went to, and like talk like, trash. Loser. When I umpired, I had I had parents meet me after the game trying to fight me at 16 years old and stuff like that. Like the lady yelling, "It's a kids' game." Just pay attention to that. But that being said, I also feel that if I ever have a kid and he's in Little League, I got to be the dad that watches from the outfield. Because if I hear some dude chirping my kid, I'm going to walk over there and crack him upside his head. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to be that way, but that's just who I am. And if I hear someone bashing Little Stick, I'm going to go out there and 
I'm gonna let him know you don't talk that way to my son. Period. Hey, now you brought it up. You gotta have that's gotta be your baby name, Little Stick. Little Stick. Yep. I, I got I gotta have someone to give me a baby. <laughs> okay, when you have kids, gotta be Little Stick. Yes, for sure. No, uh, we're gonna we're gonna name him Trey if I have a boy. Well, that'll be his nickname because I'm Clarence Samuel Day the second. He'll be Clarence Samuel Day the third, and he'll go by Trey. Ah, oh, I like that. It's already planned out. I like that. Yeah, not, not Little Stick. Oh, we'll call him Little Stick, but okay. Trey, I, I think Trey's much cooler. <laughs> now you got to yeah. finally lose your virginity, and it might happen. Yeah, now I just got to get laid. <laughs> On that note, let's end the show. Fish, why don't you end the show today? Follow up to that, Fish. All right, well, we got the Bound Bleeding Show from 11 to 1 and the Hook from 3 to 5. Uh, we had Crypto. You can win 25 k in Crypto. That's from 12 and 4. And, uh, yeah, have a great Thursday or Wednesday. Oh, boy. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow for Thursday. June 17th. Yeah, June 17th. Happy birthday, Tupac. Oh, Is it? Yep. 50th.